Welcome to Sebring. And welcome to round number two of the VRS GT iRacing World Championship. As we are here in sunny Florida, ready for three hours of hard intensive racing here on the iRacing service. Paul Smith, Connie Maddock and Ray Churneth will be doing commentary of this race. I'm Will Vincent and we'll be here non-stop on Racebot TV, streaming live on iRacing Live, Facebook Live, YouTube Gaming and Twitch TV, one of the biggest esports sim racing series in the world. And well, Paul, it's also got itself a new title sponsor. Yeah, absolutely. Virtual Racing School coming on board as a title sponsor. Absolutely great to have them on board to uh, to support this series. And, and what a series. What an opening round we had last time at Bathurst as well as they attacked the mountain. It's a completely different type of track here as we're in the very, very much flat land of Florida. We are indeed. It is flat here at this racetrack. And well, Randy, two different types of um, asphalt almost to deal with. You've got yourself the normal part, but you've got the strips going from asphalt up to concrete, as is often common in North American racing. And the drivers here today have got to be able to navigate around this racetrack. It's very narrow, different types of tarmac on track as well. And they've got to be very careful. The main talking point is going to be the bumps. It's a very, very old surface we have here at Sebring. A lot of bumps in awkward places, and well, that's going to be the big talking point, one of the big things that we have uh, see with how these guys approach car setup and all that like. So which cars are going to be able to handle the bumps? Who's going to be stable and quick through the likes of Turn 1 and Turn 17? And what cars are going to be making up the time through the slower and smoother sectors of the track? Yeah, as we have a look at the track conditions, Connery, it is, of course, 5.8 miles almost this track. is. 5.8 kilometers this track um, it's 24 degrees centigrade in terms of the air temperature of course that's higher in terms of the track temperature 14 kilometer an hour wind so it is gusty here today with 33 percent rate relative humidity yeah, it is pretty breezy out there, but I don't think that'll be too much of an issue. An interesting note is that track temperature is only 27 degrees, not anything like 40 degrees uh, like we have seen in previous uh, WCS events, at least in the Grand Prix series. So these tyres are going to survive a little bit longer uh, than perhaps they would otherwise in a little bit of warm weather. So that's an interesting thing to note in terms of the strategy. And uh, well, I'm just glad to get back to what is a relatively normal racetrack in Sebring. We had what is an outlier track in Bath this the last round you'd have to drive that track so much differently to other circuits this one i think this is more of a little level playing field want to give a shout out to it's from track cam 22.com for tv cameras and one design the official helmet provider of valtteri bottas in terms of graphics for 2018 Good luck to him. Of course, he had a miserable qualifying um, for the Australian Grand Prix um, in the final session. Crashed out down at the first corner. Um, but also, Simon Grossman, Aptioneer.in, and Nick Thisson for Racebot TV. Live timing and scoring, which is going to be there with you all the way through the day. Don't forget as well, we will have coverage non-stop of the Neo Endurance Series 24 hours of Le Mans. And I want to talk about this for a moment here, Connery, because of the fact that there are going to be a lot of drivers who are going to do double duty over the course of this weekend, running in the VRS GT iRacing World Championship and then also running in the Near Endurance Series 24 hours at Le Mans. Yeah, but I obviously think that uh, most teams will actually prioritize this series over the other one. A lot more to play for here. But uh, yeah, it'd be an interesting uh, thing to note when it uh, comes to the start of the Neo 24 Hours of Le Mans. Maybe they put in some of their uh, other reserve drivers in to try and get through that first stint. But this is the main event that we're looking at right now. Qualifying is still underway. Most of your drivers have set themselves lap times. Currently, Yannick's racing blue uh, out there on pole position. But uh, I just can't wait to get this one started. Yeah, let's talk technical for a couple of moments. Seven minutes remaining in terms of qualifying. Update, season two, Randy, and balance of performance is always a thing on everyone's mind when we come to this series. This is the last balance of performance adjustment we'll have for this season, and it has been a very interesting one. This, um... 
it's for those who are unaware this is actually an in-series BOP as well so we've coming into this from Bathurst we have the Audi getting a 25 kilogram uh, added to it so a bit of a nerf on that car and 10 kilos added to the BMW as well and right now just looking at qualifying you know we're trying to just generally throw it on in the background but things are looking really good at the moment three different manufacturers in the top three right now Jake Sturgios is leading the way in terms of Simicube NX Racing Blue then, Paul. And he's got himself, well, 0.055 over PRT Red. And McLaren at the front of the field. We know the McLarens do qualify well. They certainly do qualify well. It's, it's maybe that race pace that they uh, have a little bit of an issue with uh, over the long oh, cool. run. Oh, core going to the top there. Ricardo Castroledo cracking lap time there. And uh, getting enough for uh, half a tenth, uh, half a tenth, maybe uh, point six, uh, six hundredths of a second faster than the uh, NX Racing. That's a great lap there from uh, from Carl Sim Racing. And also NX Racing Blue, they lost it um, down at the last part of their lap because of the fact um, on turn number seventeen they had themselves an issue. We've got S Racing Blue currently in P number five. Hugson Core Motorsports. Up in P number four, Pure Racing Team Red in third place. There we can see them. Simicude, Image Racing Blue in second, and Corsin Racing Black. They are leading the way right now. But the important thing for today, Randy, is that what we saw at Bath first with double stinting, treble stinting the tyres, as Freddy Rass moves in then. FA Racing GT2, sorry, G2 Logitech G to the top of the timing stands. They get it done. Um, as Keiko Shub is right now finishing a lap. But double stinting tyres will not necessarily be possible here as Keiko Shu then having to do opposite lock in his Mercedes on the run out of the final corner. He comes on towards pit road. That's going to be the big thing. I know in testing, at least for what my team was able to do when we ran the 12-hour in the Audi, it was like a three-second or so drop-off, and that was in default. So I don't think you're going to see a lot of teams that really can push it in terms of the tires. is really, really big. But then again, these guys might have something that they can uh, throw at these cars. Maybe something they don't that I don't to be able to get the tire life out of these cars. At the end of the day, we saw Mitchell do that triple stint at Bathurst, and it nearly worked for them. Uh, but it's going to be an interesting one, especially with a shorter race, half distance. Uh, it's pretty much all going to be up in the air. Venival Sim Racing White up into P number 8. They displace Venival Sim Racing Yellow down into ninth place. Pure Racing Team Red, they go up into P number 2, Paul. 11 one thousandths of a second behind. FA Racing G2, Logitech G. You, you look at how close this field is. The gap between pole position and uh, you're talking down in 37th, 38th is one second. One second covering that many cars around this track is absolutely incredible. It's showing the level of competition that we've got here in this series. Absolutely fantastic. And uh, pure racing team, Max Miller Beneke, you know, he always pulls out those quick laps, doesn't he? And uh, he does it when it needs to be done. Yeah, indeed. So, so your top 15 drivers then on the left-hand side of your screen. We have a total of 49 drivers registered for this race. Three minutes and 20 seconds are remaining in qualifying. We'll take you at RaceBot TV away for a moment. We'll be back with the race after this.
Qualifying is almost in the books then for the second round of the VRS GT iRacing World Championship Series. Handing it over now to the commentary team of Conor Maddock, Randy Chenoweth, led by Paul Smith. And Paul, take it away. Yeah, thank you very much then. Well, fantastic. Uh, brilliant. It's going to be fantastic that uh, this is going to be an epic race. As I was mentioned earlier, the qualifying time's really close together. First to 39th at the moment within one second. And uh, Connery, you look at this field, you look at the, the level of competition in this field, it just keeps on getting better and better to this series. It really does, and uh, these are the top guys uh, in iRacing. You can say the top guys in sim racing as well, all coming to this series to compete, and that has just resulted in some of the insane qualifying times that you see, and the insane, insanely small gaps uh, between these drivers. You've got one, two, three, four drivers, like from P number four all the way to P number seven. They're all in the same tenth of a second, and that is kind of a theme going all the way down the field. Everyone's so close. So, uh, Randy, you know, we're looking at this uh, this race. What's going to be the key to this race then as we're headed in towards the start here? Tires and managing your race and being smart. It's a difficult track to race here at Sebring. There's a couple good passing opportunities, but the handful of sketchy ones as well. Turn one and turn 17, the most notable ones. You can make moves there, but with the bumps, it can always be a bit of a lottery and a bit of a risk trying to make moves there. We saw people at Bathurst get aggressive, and for some people it worked, other people it didn't. Risk management is going to be big. You're going to need to be start pushing hard early here at Sebring, but at the same time, don't push yourself too hard too early. Well, let's take you through the grid then here for round two of the Virtual Racing School GT World Championship here on iRacing Live, brought to you by Racebot TV. And it's FA Racing GT Logitech G on pole position with a time of 1 minute 56.795. Only just ahead of Pure Racing Team Red in second place. Corsair Racing Black then third with Simicube Inex Racing Blue fourth place. On the third row of the grid, it is Heusebot Co Motorsports with Esther Racing team in that sixth place. Pure Racing Team Blue seventh with Urdox Mudspots in eighth. Sima Cube Inex Racing Red in ninth and then Vandervel Sim Racing White in tenth place. Bit of a theme with Vandervel because they're in eleventh and twelfth as well with the yellow and blue cars respectively. TTL Esports race winners from round one at Bathurst down in thirteenth place. You say only down in thirteenth place. They're only four tenths of a second off of your pole time. Then you've got VRS Quanda Simspot, the first of their cars. They're such a nightmare in that first round. They're in 14th place with the number eight car. Dream Factory and Evolution Racing Team, 15th and 16th with SDK, Apex Racing UK, 17th. Thrustmaster Mavano, red in 19, 18th place with Triton Racing, 19th. And Odox Mudspot Samsung Pro in 20th place. The rest of your field will be going through noticeable uh, teams down there. VRS Quanda Simspot number one car down in 23rd place and uh, Evolution Racing Team number 28 down, car down in 26th place. Number of big teams are, are, are in the mix here but Connery race winners from the first round down in 13th place. They must be a little bit disappointed with that. Yeah, a good couple of teams have had not too great qualifyings, and uh, TTL Esports is one of them. You mentioned the Coanda cars, they got the 8 machine in, in 4th place, you've got the 1 machine in 23rd, you've got uh, even further down the field, the number 18 VRS Coanda Simsport cars, 32nd, so... A lot of these big teams have had very, very mixed results in qualifying. You've got even cars even further down the field as well. You've got MSP racing 1 and 2. They are 38th and 39th, respectively. Mivano as well, 44th. So this is going to be a huge effort from those teams at the backfield to get themselves back through this amount of traffic. Absolutely. And uh, just going into this round then, just the one race so far, TTL Esports do lead that championship by 20 points over FA Racing GT Logitech with Corsim Racing Black in third place. They're in a good position there in third place. Uh, Odox Mudspots and Pure Racing Team Red round out the top five of your championship. As I say, one race gone so far. It's a long old season is this one as well, Randy. There's plenty to be won here. Eight rounds of the championship. It's not desperate that you get a really good result here, but you kind of want a really good result here to set a momentum going in your championship, say, if you faltered in that first round. 
Uh, this is this is in my opinion going to be the first real starting point of the championship. Bathurst is a bit of a wild card, just by default, just given its uh, the style of track, the way you have to drive that place here at Sebring. This is the first quote unquote normal circuit we have on the schedule. This is where you need to start setting your tempo. I think if you start having bad races here, it's going to be a long slog to the end of this championship. Absolutely. Drivers set heading around this course on their pace lap here. Just getting everything set. The drivers getting comfortable in their machines because they're going to be in it. We expect for uh, for two stints as they're coming around Collier now. Really tricky left-hander. It's quite a high-speed corner. A few bumps in there as well. And it means that you're always going to be turning through 12 in towards Tower Corner where you're braking hard for that corner. Really tricky circuit, this one, Connery, and just quickly touching on that, you've got, as Will mentioned earlier, the changing surfaces. These guys are going to have to slightly compromise the setups for this track. Yep, they will. They won't have to. Won't, they won't be able to run those cars as uh, as close to the ground as perhaps they otherwise would have at some other racing circuit with a more more of a smooth surface. But where those bumps really start to kill you, though, is coming through the final. Uh, well, it's basically guys, two corners, but it's basically one. It's Sunset Bend at the end of the lap. Some lines coming through that corner, you get a whole bunch of bumps that you have to try and keep the car stable through, and that could be a major issue, especially if you're trying to fight for position. And while we're on your Connery, quickly, one word, who's going to win? I think FA Racing G2 have a very good chance here, but PRT are looking very, very, very strong indeed, especially with Maximilian Benecke behind the wheel in the first stint. So I think it's going to be a close run thing, but I think FA Racing G2 will just edge out the rest of the field. That's a very lot of one words there. Randy, one word. <laughs> who's seen build core motorsports? There we go. That's two words, but I'll count it because it's one team. Three words. <laughs> As we're heading in towards the final corner then, Sunset Bend, the iRacing pace car will peel off to the driver's right. And it's Freddie Rasmussen then leading the field. At the start of this one, three hours around Sebring here in the Virtual Racing School GT World Championship Series here on iRacing Live, brought to you with Racebot TV. The green flag is in the air. Away we go then. And already there's drama at the back there. Oh. We've got a car upside down. Several cars going upside down. Drivers got to be careful here with this one at the start. The back of the field severely affected with that one. We'll get an eye on that one as we're going through here. But at the front, it is pretty clean. Freddie Rasmussen leading this one ahead of Pure Racing Team Red and then Corsa Racing Black Hosting Vault Commod Sports Simicube Inex Racing Blue battling with Pure Racing Team Blue that's up a fifth place there as they're heading round through five into Big Ben six whether there'll be any more drama with other drivers we'll have to wait and see but at the moment it's just really that drama out that last corner that's kind of affected everyone as we're heading down towards the hairpin turn number seven cars in the mid pack just all all fanning out, all trying to get their bit of ground, and it's a really tight corner. Is the hairpin really tight? The ape exit as well, because the car it just pinches up on you there through that round now. And uh, well, these guys at the front, they're already starting to uh, work their way clear. The front three, just a slight gap over that hoisting vault car motorsport car. It's Audi one, two, three, and then a Mercedes in fourth place. And Randy, I don't know if you got managed to uh, catch any of that. What happened? But it was a pure racing car. Uh, pure racing team car that went up and over. There were a few cars up and over. I haven't seen the incident. I've been watching the rest of this start as well. We also nearly had an incident with Odox Motorsport down on the hairpin. They somehow managed to slid through the uh uh, slow, uh, roll themselves through the uh, through the grass, but I don't know. That's a big, big incident before ever getting to start finish. Likely just over aggression from those in the back. We've got uh, six cars then in pit road. After that opening incident, we'll have to wait and see. There's a car with a slowdown penalty further down your order. It's one of the uh, NX racing cars, Jack Sedgwick, and that's what happens if you just manage to just caught yourself a little bit on here and uh, well. Pass, pass, look at this, Jake Stergios then, sixth place, battling away with Esther Racing. And in front of them, Hoist of Alcoma Sports trying to make the moves there on course in Racing Black. And uh, Connery, I know you can't manage to catch the start instant. What happened there? Yeah, well, it was just a cacophony of issues at the back of your field. The original incident that sparked everything off was Dream Factory deciding to run themselves into, into the back of TTL Esports. And then there's avoiding action from cars behind. Triton Racing came across in right into the door of Evolution Racing Team. And then there's way too much to explain that goes on behind. 
Yeah, it all got a bit of uh, bit interesting, a bit of a conflagration of cars there. Uh, we'll try to give you uh, how they stand at the moment. Uh, your championship leader, CTL Esports, down four positions, down to 17th. Big gainers in that one. Evolution Racing Team, the 28 car, is up 10 places. Already these front two uh, are out there at front. And if you want to keep up with everything, you have got live timing and scoring. Racebot.tv forward slash timing. Make sure you keep up with them with all the action that's going on here. And well, at the moment, at the front here, Randy, it's Freddie Rasmussen and Maximilian Bedeke. They're in the battle for the race lead. I expect these two are going to just play relatively calm and work together with one another as they head now through Bishop on the run towards the mall and a long back straight coming off of 16. And it is about a second and some change that they have over the likes of Court Sim Racing Black, Houston Velcor Motorsports, Pure Racing Team, and then Inex all basically lined up as they head down this back straightaway. Let's see if Max is going to work that slipstream on Freddy and maybe find some way somehow to make a move at 17. I don't think so. Not nearly going to be close enough as... Really, I think I'm keeping the uh, car I'm keeping an eye on in our front gaggle right now is definitely going to be that Mercedes of Hussingfield Core Motorsports. I know that the Mercedes is not particularly strong, strong in qualifying trim, so to see this car this far up the order, I think it's going to be decently quick once we get deeper into this thing and the tires start going away on the other cars. And of course, Hussingfield Core Motorsports didn't have the best of days at Bathurst in the first round of the championship, but now the riot on the tail there, of course, in racing black. It's Keke Shube versus this is Ricardo Castroledo. Uh, that's for fourth and third. But don't forget, they've got Pure Racing Team Blue right behind Maximilian Venig, who's there as well. So a good gaggle of three cars here. You've also got four cars behind them. Simicubinex Racing, Esther Racing Team, Odox Mudspots, and VRS Coanda Simsport. Matt Backham up five positions at the start of this race. And uh, really, this is... Everybody just trying to sort themselves out here, Connery, trying to uh, to get everything calmed down. How you know, how key is it to make these positions at the start, but then also get yourself into that groove? Well, making positions on, on the start is even more key in shorter endurance races like this one. We only have three hours to play with as opposed to six, uh, like we had at Bathurst. So track early track position is much, much more important than it otherwise would be. But uh, on the flip side, you also got to make sure that you do get into that sort of rhythm because uh, if you have a consistent pace, obviously that's much better than doing some very, very quick laps. And then all of a sudden you just make a mistake somewhere because you're pushing too hard and then you lose all that time you gained. Absolutely, lead battle now, less than a tenth. Looking down the inside there is Maximilian Bedeke. Out of the corner, out of Le Mans, down Ullman straight once again, heading towards Sunset Bend, that final corner. Corner of a thousand lines here. And, uh, well, into the braking zone. It's really tricky braking zone here, Randy, because you're, you're turning and you're braking at the same time. And then you've got a nasty bump right there on the middle of the corner. That is one of the big things. It's a high-speed braking zone, which means that as you get on the brakes, the rear is constantly wanting to step out, and you transition onto the slippery concrete surface that is very, very bumpy. It's the big, in my opinion, turn 17 is the corner here at Sebring that you set the car up for between that as well as turn one. If the car works in those corners, chances are the car is going to be pretty good over the course of the lap, and like you said, it really is the corner of a thousand different lines. Everyone takes that final corner at Sebring relatively differently. It's sort of famous for that depending on one the line you run how you how different drivers fluctuate with pedals when you get on the throttle when you get on the brake it's just one of those interesting things that drivers kind of have to slowly evolve and learn how to do on their own absolutely battle at the front still intense it's going to be intense all the way through and i do reckon it's going to be a little bit of a strategy play between the two of them and i tell you what maximilian Beneke, as much as he's been wanting to get past freddie rasmussen i think he might be uh, happy just staying behind just for a while here uh because he will be saving a little bit of fuel in that draft there uh connery because you, you, sometimes you're better off staying behind, saving that fuel, then at the pit stop you're putting in less fuel uh, and getting yourself uh, jumped ahead on your strategy car. Yeah, that could be the option that Pure Racing team uh, are going to go for here. And you have to remember also that we did have a full pace lap here uh, at Sebring, so the, uh, the drivers just had to save much more fuel on their pace lap than they otherwise would be. Usually in iRacing, especially in the more recent tracks, usually start about two-thirds uh, to you know, three-quarters of the way through the lap on the, on the first pace lap. 
on this one, you had to start all, all the way at the start finish line and go all the way around. So that is uh, something that you really have to consider when you talk about fuel numbers. But uh, we'll see when we get to the first stops here. Uh, but we've only got eight minutes done. Yeah, it's, it's, it's hardly anything in this one. Marin Sherlock has been showing his nose a little bit on uh, Jake Sturgios in the Inex Racing Blue Car down in 6th and 7th place. He's trying to get by here as Marin. He must feel confident that he can get forward, pull them forward. He's going for the inside into turn number one. And Jake Sturgios says, do you know what? There you go. I'll let you go down the inside. But that means I get the cutback on the exit of the corner. Not quite enough to pull alongside. Sturgios now coming under pressure from behind. Odox Mud Spots almost making contact there, but that's a change of position and sixth place for Esther Racing. But that one move has just brought a lot of cars behind into that battle here, Randy, because there are a number of cars here all within the second of each other in this battle for sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, you name it. It's going down the order here. I think Sturgios is fixing to get freight trained, to be honest. Marin Kolak is pretty much already checked out a few tenths of a second and is well clear of the battle. Next, you have Odox, Kowanda. Then you have a bunch of the Vendelwall cars, and you have the likes of Thrustmaster Mavano and another Odox car in this one. Here we go. VRS Kowanda, Sinsport, Mac Backham taking a look a little bit on Odox there at Cunningham. Not quite close enough, though, to be able to get that one done. As they go through, Collier once again heading towards Tower. And... Uh, Matt Backham is all over the back of him. He's wanting to make that move. There is a slight bit of damage on the back of the Odox car, so maybe affecting his top speed. And the lights are flashing. We all know what that means. It means I want to come through here. As they head to Lamar once again. Great battling all the way through your field here. Just to mention, cars that got caught up in that opening instant. Euphoria Racing GT, SDK, Apex Racing UK, Triton Racing, uh, Evolution Racing Team. And speaking of Evolution Racing Team, Andrew Carl's got off at Le Mans. The exit of Le Mans is on the grass. He's managed to keep out of everybody's way. And he's coming back onto the track. But that's uh, hardly ideal for the 28 car. He's managed to feed himself in, but he's dropped a ton of positions here now. And he's going to lose even more. He's getting very aggressive on the defence here in towards Sunset Bend. And, well, he'll be frustrated with himself with that instant. Losing control at Lamar, but able to carry on. As uh, look, just as I say, just finishing off. Uh, Evolution Racing Team uh, with their 27 car, Teo Martin Esports, the 51 car, Torsten Motorsport Blue, and SRT Esport all out of this race at the opening part of the race. As still battling going on further down in your field. You've got side by side action for 27th and 26th, and uh, well. Certainly great action all the way through, but we've got to keep an eye up near the front because those guys at the front, Connery, they're, uh, they're pulling away slightly now, our uh, FA Racing G2 and uh, Pure Racing Team Red. Yep, they definitely are. Those top two are really stretching the gap here over the rest of the field. Things are very tight as well between the likes of Course Sim Racing Black, Houston Folk Core Motorsports, and Pure Racing Team. We're starting to get that sort of gaggle effect we're used to seeing in this championship where you're getting groups of cars of equal pace that are slowly just working together. You see that with your top duo of FA Racing G2 Logitech G as well as Pure Racing Team Red. Then you have the trio of Core, Houston Field, and Pure, actually, I'd rather say Core, Core, and Esta, different, uh, excuse me, Core, Core, and Pure, and then you're getting that other fight with Esta, NX, Odox, VRS, Coin, and Synthport, and the Vendaval cars, the three Musketeers, all trying to work themselves forward. They certainly are. We've got about set two and a half seconds between second and third place. That little gaggle of three cars, and I think they're all just settling down now, although Keke Shube looking to the inside here of Sunset Bend, you're not really going to make that move into that corner, but you can, Randy, set them up for the exit of the corner, get the run down your main pit straight. That's what he's kind of doing right now. Let's see, is he going to make the move on that number 74 car into turn one? No, he's not. And, well, it's a difficult place to pass, like I said there, on that first corner. It's just the way it narrows up on the exit. A couple awkward bumps at the apex as well. Down now in towards what is technically turn three, because this racetrack is, the is in the United States, and we don't know the difference between a corner and, well, if it's not banked or on an oval, we don't really know whether it's a corner or not. But they come off towards Big Bend, turn six. And, well, I think Kay would have liked to be able to make a move on that core, uh, that core Audi, but 
Got a little bit too far away from him now. Is he going to get now hard on the brakes down and towards the hairpin? Look how much he closes on the brakes. That uh, purple and yellow Mercedes so good uh, getting down into the hairpin. I think Kay, when he gets close enough, he'll be able to slot a move down ball, but just trying to get close enough because that Audi seems to have fantastic speed through the mid-corner. It certainly does have that speed there and uh, really trying to fight once themselves, but they don't want to fight too hard here, Connery, because, well, they're just losing time on your race leaders here, although they have caught up a little bit so far on this lap. They're now only two seconds behind second place, but if you fight too much here, Connery, you end up losing time and then your race leaders are gone. Yeah, exactly, and that two seconds, that 2.3 seconds is just getting uh, bigger and bigger and bigger as these two guys decide to uh, uh, go at it, heading their way through Le Mans now for the seventh time. There's also Pure Racing Team Blue that's also on the back of this three-car train that could have something to say about getting themselves up in towards P number three, but behind Neil Stafer now on the Oldman Street down towards Sunset Bend, and we'll be interested to see the lap time this next time by to see how much the second group is actually losing, but look at that, Keiko Shubay closing up so much on the brakes he's really making the braking performance of that mercedes work to his advantage as we're heading down the pit straight once again you lead to our fa racing g2 and pure racing team red and then this gaggle of three cars colson racing black house of car mode spots and pure racing team blue they're about two tenths of a second a lap slower than your two race uh, leaders at the moment fastest guy on that last lap though was Marin Cholak in the Esther Racing Team car three tenths of a second quicker than this gaggle so Randy if it's not careful these three are going to be joined by a fourth here I think they're going to be uh, to be honest Marin Cholak he's had some fantastic pace lately in the GT3 cars in the iRacing service he was very quick at Bathurst and someone who's been around them for a while and he's always been decently quick but we've never seen him be the sort of driver putting in the fastest laps in a race especially in a server like this so to see him putting down fast laps this early shows the pace that Esther racing team potentially has it's gonna be interesting to see how they move themselves forward as they now head down towards Cunningham they certainly do once again we're already 15 minutes into this race here and uh, certainly Really intriguing how these battles are going to pan out in this one. It's going to be a lot of bit of a, of a, you know, a bit of a push between the few of them between strategies. Don't forget, you can get involved with us. Just make sure you check out our social media. Check us out on Facebook and also on Twitter. Get involved with it, and uh, you know we'll, we'll keep an eye on social media. We've got Jack Styles working on the social media for us today, and every one of these. Uh, endurance world championship broadcasts make your thoughts known make, let us know uh, what your thoughts are on the race because uh, this certainly is going to be an intriguing one and connery a few of these drivers a few of these teams have had a bit of recent experience around sebring because of course a couple of weeks ago they uh, they did attempt to uh, they did uh, take part in the uh, sebring 12 hours although i do remember marin like having a bit of a uh, of a a hardware failure that sent him straight on into the tire wall but yeah let's hope that uh, his hardware is all uh, safe and sound shall we say for uh, for cholak as uh, he is running relatively well right now for that esther racing team qualify p number six is running in p number six so he hasn't moved up or down at all but uh, sometimes that is just all you need to do you just need to set uh, set your sights on just running your own race he's in a bit of clear air right now of course but uh, in terms of his lap times, he is, uh, as we mentioned before, he is catching this, uh, this second pack here for P3, 4 and 5. So in the next couple of laps, we might see him hook onto the back. Yeah, we certainly will. It would be good to see him get onto the back because we've seen how he can make those moves and make them count, make them work. And uh, just looking further down then, Odox is still leading this big group of cars. And it's sort of got into sort of little bunches of three here you got Odox, you've got uh, Inex Racing Blue, you've got VRS Panda Sim Spot in the brake car and then you've got the cars behind them uh, Van der Velsen Racing White, Van der Velsen Racing Blue, Van der Velsen Racing Yellow you would imagine that they're all going to be working together uh, in that one with Thrustmaster Mavano, Odox Motorsport, Samsung, Pure Racing Team Yellow, they're all pretty much in a line here and just little gaps between them it's just separating them out into little groups of three and that seems to be uh seems to be the magic number around here randy today 
Groups of three, it seems to be how it's working out in this race in the early stages. That really is the main situation. Granted, that sort of second gaggle of cars, I wouldn't really say that they've really divided themselves into groups of three. It really is sort of just one long train at the moment. A couple of gaps may be slightly larger than the others, but to so get down to the mid pack in this championship, it is very, very tight. But you're definitely right. You're starting to, we are just about starting to see uh, drivers kind of separate themselves from the others. You know, top two, of course, they've got themselves out to over a two second advantage here in the first 10 laps. So, Freddie and Max setting a blistering pace right now. Yeah, absolutely. Last lap, 58 eight from both Freddie Rasmussen and Maximilian Bernecke. Then the next cars were 59-0, 58-9. So not that far off the pace here, Connery, these guys. But, uh, oh, hoisting about Motorsport now, coming under serious pressure as they're going to Big Bend. And uh, Maximilian Bernecke, you think, is maybe getting a little bit impatient now behind that Mercedes. He wants to get past and make the moves forward onto Call Sim Racing Black. Yep, he really does, but knows the tail, uh, knows the bumper through the hairpin they will go, and you can expect that part of the track to get a little bit dusty, shall we say, uh, before the end of this race with the uh, amount of dirt that gets brought on there at some point during this race, but uh, things will stay as the status quo, at least in your second pack right now. I can't help but feel that Keiko Shube is making a couple of small mistakes here and there that's just dropping him off the back, of course, him racing black and into the clutches of Venig, but the thing is, Venig hasn't been able to catch capitalize on any of those chances. But Connery does have the uh, the double tour here as well, double draft. That really is going to be helping him in the long run of this of this race. Yeah, but it really will be helping him, especially on the run down towards Sunset Bend, which could be uh, also one of the major overtaking opportunities as well, heading through Le Mans. So Sunset Bend would be the corner just after this one. Important to get a good run out of here. They can run wide onto the curb there. That is fine in terms of the track limits, uh, in terms of iRacing Sporting Code. But down towards Sunset Bend, this is the this is the corner of multiple, multiple lines. You can take so many different uh, options coming through here. But the thing is, they're not going to exactly proof by point as they all take the same line but sky by side through there is very very easy to do it's the it's the habitual habit of, uh, of a commentator you you say something to make a point and then the drivers say nope we're going to do the opposite as they head across the line for another lap here 40 minutes or oh, uh, 40 minutes 20 minutes of this race oh. done oh look at that Oh, Sim Racing Black running wide out of turn number one. This is the chance that Keisha Kashube needed to take. He needs to crowd him a little bit here. Forces him onto the curb. Almost contact between Pure Racing Team and Core Sim Racing Black. Now it's a good through. Big Bend Core Sim Racing does have the inside line through here. And Castroledo is going to hold it. He wants to hook that inside line though. Good defensive on Pure Racing Team. Force him to go wide into hairpin. And in fact, they're going to hold on to that position. So only one position lost there around day but it could have been a lot worse definitely could have things almost got very very contacty there as Castroledo able to hold on to that fourth spot Max Winnegg likely not going to be too pleased with that but at the end of the day this all works out but we now because of that that is reeled in Marin Kolak and that Esther racing team by quite a bit he was back by about a second or so now just a few tenths off these two is a couple interesting lines taken for these guys they head down in towards tower i think castroledo i don't know if the tires have started to go or what but he seems to be struggling a little bit and that pure racing team car seems to have the pace on him and uh well they're going through in towards lamar once again tricky section is this actually so you, you feel that you can carry a lot more speed that you can do and it's important to get the good run out of that turn 16 onto the Ullman straight to carry the speed all the way down the straight and look at this everybody just following each other's slipstream as they go down the Ullman straight here and Marin Kolak and also Hazel Cecilia as well getting onto the back of this battle as well so uh, all of a sudden four car battle involved here Castro Leda though wide out of that, that final corner Sunset Bend heading across the line once again starting lap 12 of this event here Venig looking just just poking his nose out a little bit getting in the mirrors of Castro Leda there and it's a really tricky corner it's turn one as well once again Castro Leda runs wide there but Venig did follow him uh, and Connery that, that, that first corner it is really wide on the entry but then on the exit really pinches up and narrows down 
yeah, it's basically like a funnel. It's like you can go six, seven wide or whatever you want to do onto the entry, but that's always going to file down into two wide maximum coming off the corner. And even some drivers find it hard to even uh, to do even that uh, since it's so narrow on the exit. So that is what the drivers have to be uh, thinking about when they try to make a move coming down in towards turn number one, because do, you have to ask yourself, do you actually have the racing room on exit? Matt Backham has made his way through for VRS Ponder Sim Sport past Jake Sturgios. Not the best start for the McLaren driver. Sturgios, of course, who started in fourth place in this race, now down to ninth place in this event in the early stages here. Obviously, not going well for the Inex racing team. As they go through tower once again, Matt Backham, interested to see whether he can pull away. Uh, from Jake, see whether Jake was holding him up or not. Uh, one thing that is noticeable is Keke Shube has got a little bit of a gap now between him and Ricardo Castroledo. About uh, six tenths of a second between the two of them here, Randy, and it's showing that there is pace, race pace is definitely in that Mercedes here today. Yeah, Kay's already starting to stretch out that gap as they head down the Ullman straight for the 12th time here. And actually, I think Pure Racing Team Black, no, Max Winnegg, he was tucked closely under the rear wing of that Corsim Racing uh, car. And uh, excuse me, Pure Racing Team Blue, Corsim Racing uh, Black, getting confused here, but he was tucked closely under the rear wing. I thought he might have had a move, but opted to not go for it. But you're right, showing good speed now that Kay Kashubi's gotten out in clean air. And I think really it's just the dirty air that would have been holding up that Mercedes. That car uh, really likes downforce. It is sort of uh, an equivalent in some ways to what the BMW does. It makes up a lot of its speed through clean air and high-speed cornering ability. Really relies on the aerodynamics. And I think now that Kay has the clean air, he can really kind of push that advantage. And well, we're starting to see that in lap times. Leaders are still about three tenths of a second, four tenths of a second between the two of them. It's still a fair racing G2 and pure racing team red out in the front. And you've got this uh, group here, Keikashu being the Heusenbach Commons spot car. And then Co-op Sim Racing Black, Pure Racing Team Blue, Esther Racing Team, and now Odox Motorsport as well, the 15 car, Hazel Cecilia, who we saw have a, uh, a, a really good time of it at Bathurst, Connery. In the battle, once again in the mix, in seventh place, and he's getting onto the back of them, and look not that far behind either as well, because uh, VRS Quantum Sim Sport, they're going to get the hammer down as well. Yeah, of course, Odox Motorsport Sport P number four in the previous event at Bathurst, so let's see if they can continue on uh, that very, very good result in the first round of this uh, uh, VRS GT World Championship, but they've got quite a couple of cars ahead of them to try and get themselves by, and uh, they're all varying degrees of uh, pace here. I'm not entirely sure who is exactly holding everyone up, I think it's just a case of they're just so close that they have little bit of mistakes, they have uh, just brief instances of two wide and it just drags everyone else back into the mix. The lead battle is quite close now. Just two tenths of a second between them. The last lap, Freddie Rasmussen was the quickest guy on track. We'll see how that pans out this time around because Maximum Beneke has been catching up once again using that slipstream, getting a little bit of better runs through corners across the line they go. Um, Maximilian Beneke, a 58.537. So two tenths of a second faster on that last lap than Randy as Pure Racing Team Blue making the move into turn number one and it's a position gained for Pure Racing Team Blue. Maximilian Venig making that move on Ricardo Castroledo. A good move there by Max. Like you said, you can make the move down at turn one, but a difficult place to make it stick, and it was well done by Max to make that stick. Now let's see how Ricardo Castellato responds. We saw him make that mistake about a half dozen laps ago, and he aggressively tried to hold on to that fourth position as you'd expect, and now he has the likes of Marin Kolak as well as that Odex car driven by Jesus Cecilia, two very quick drivers that have been slowly reeling him in. I think if you're uh, Ricardo Castroledo, I honestly might let them through and just try to launch, uh, excuse me, latch onto the back of this little gaggle because I think trying to push with these guys right behind him and really trying to defend as well, I think he's just going to end up eating up the tires and likely end up costing himself more time. Sim Racing Black, of course, started this race in third place. They're now down to fifth place in this event, down two positions in the early going here. And uh, they won't be too pleased with that, but they won't be panicking about things either, Connor. They'll be uh, 
the, the, the still the battle is the lead battle it's changing hands here and pure racing team red up into the lead maximum Beneke said right I've had enough of being behind Fred Rasmussen I'm coming through and that's the position changed at the front of your field there Connery yeah, this might not be done either because it's an early defensive inside line taken from Paneke. He's gonna mean it's gonna mean that Freddy Rasmussen has to go the long way around at Sunset Bend. Here's the multiple lines into Sunset Bend coming. Rasmussen so so wide on entry, looking to get that late apex to try and get the momentum off the corner. But I don't think he's gonna have him quite enough to make it side by side, at least down the pit straight. But look at him, he's still in that slipstream and he can still go for the move down in towards turn number one, but I think he's just gonna back out. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, that might be his team saying do you know what we're in a good position here now they've been sat behind for almost the first half hour of this race of uh, pure racing team let's sit behind them get a little bit of that draft get a little bit of fuel saving that way and uh, work it that way for the strategy to basically cancel it out but uh, knowing freddie rasmussen and uh, fa racing they want to uh, get the lead and they want to get it quickly as they're heading down towards the hairpin once again about two and a half three tenths of a second between them onto the brakes hard into that hairpin it's a good job these cars have abs because it really does help you out into that corner such a heavy braking zone there from such a high speed down to the slowest point on the track through fangio i was, I was disappointed with that they named those corners fangio when they're uh, not really much of a corner there into the right hand well they would have been before all this downforce imagine wow. going through there in like the lotus Imagine going through around there in a in an old Maserati from the an 1950s, old Can Am car. Yeah. <laughs> Suddenly, those seem like cool. <laughs> <laughs> but they're not. It, you get my point. Anyway, uh, the leaders coming through here once again towards Le Mans. and uh, at the moment, Freddie Rasmussen's just holding it, holding position for the time being. He's going to keep. The position in second place is about four tenths of a second behind. Now it's whether Beneke has the uh, the better race pace in that car is what's going to be uh, the issue here. As Freddie Rasmussen showing his nose in the mirrors here. I mean, how much of that, Randy, is Freddie Rasmussen trying to get in the head of Max Miller and Beneke? That's that's going to be a lot of it. These two, I think, have become sort of one of the rivalries on the sim. Max and and Freddie, probably the two quickest GT cars. Uh, GT drivers in terms of raw pace that we have on the sim right now. They got outdone by Josh Rogers at Bathurst, but we've gotten back to form here at Sebring as they head down towards turn one. And these two have had many a fight across many of the series on the iRacing service. And it really is, I think, just going to be Freddie kind of playing. I don't want to say playing with Max, but trying to potentially force him into a mistake. That said, it was a really interesting place for Max to make that move, Paul, because down into Bishop, that's not traditionally a passing opportunity. And from as far back as Max came from the fact he was able to make that move stick was pretty phenomenal in my opinion so freddie might also be somewhat uh irritated with that because that was a little bit of a late move and it's sort of an unusual place to make a move as well it was audacious that's uh, the word that i would use there he really did uh, put it in that as uh, these two they've settled each other down a little bit and it just see max venig now getting onto the back of keiko Shubay for that third place so uh, venig and the other pure racing team blue car really showing some good race pace here in the early going you top eight them as they stand at the moment it is pure racing team red in the lead of this one by almost half a second ahead of fa racing g2 logitech g uh, with Freddie Rasmussen there in second place. Then this battle for third, Heisenwald, Komod, Spots, and Pure Racing Team Blue for uh, third and fourth there. Fifth for Q Port Sim Racing Black with Esther Racing Team in sixth. Odox Mud Spots in seventh place. And then eight round out the top eight is VRS Coanda Sim Spot. Number eight car of Mac Backham up six positions. The uh, highest number of positions gained in your top ten in this event so far. And uh, Connery, we've had that first half hour now. This is where drivers are just getting into that rhythm. They're just getting into hitting the numbers, hitting the marks, because the team bosses will be on to them saying, look, we need you to go quick, but as efficiently as possible for the fuel strategy. 
Yeah, that's the uh, this is the sort of period in the stint now where the focus less uh, shifts less uh, to the on track battles and more to the battles in the uh, in the pit stops and in the pit stop strategy. You just have to look. Okay, this is the field numbers that we're supposed to hit. Hopefully, we can get them. As actually, yeah, we're looking at extra racing team and uh, court sim racing black battle for P number five out there on the racing circuit right now. And I kind of have to talk about Esther racing team a little bit here, Paul, because uh, they're one of these teams where you could argue that they have one fantastic driver and the rest of them, uh, they, they're good, but they're not quite as good as the other driver. This is it's the same for TTL Esports with Josh Rodders. Well, I mean, this, and this is where the team dynamic comes into an event like this. It's going to affect them more, uh, Connery, in this type of event where it's on the three hours. Last time out at Bathurst, we saw uh, Josh Rogers do basically five stints mm -hmm. in that car uh, to make up for his teammates being about second, maybe two seconds off of his pace. You look at this, uh, this uh, in this, uh, I could have could speak today. Look at it at this event, three hours, it's a bigger percentage of the race that you're not driving in that one, Connery. Yeah, it is. And, uh, well, it, when we talk about TTL Esports, I thought, the, the, well, they've had a terrible start right now. So Rod, Josh Rogers hasn't really been able to uh, uh, capitalize on uh, his potential performance. We, we saw him just do absolutely amazing things uh, at Bathurst, which, he, which is a track he is really a specialist at. But he, 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 is, he and his team are back three positions in this event so far. Esther Racing Team, however, they've still been holding strong. Still still very close to gaining this position over Corsair Racing Black. We've got three Van der Waal cars all together. 10th, 11th and 12th. And uh, Randy, you know, it shows good sort of consistency across the team there that all three of them are together. But uh, it can easily be that one little mistake and you wipe out the whole t uh, all three of the cars. Yeah, but uh, you're always going to play relatively nicely with one another, aren't you? And like you said, the consistency, they qualified 10th, 11th, and 12th. And, well, they run right now 10th, 11th, and 12th out there on the racetrack. So they're just sort of in their own little world. And, really, this is sort of the ideal situation, isn't it? Be put into a three-hour race, be running in or just outside of the top ten with teammates in your windshield and teammates in your rearview mirror, knowing that you're not going to get too much pressure. Just get into a rhythm, move your way through this race, and get yourself down towards this first pit stop. Pretty much, I think, Vendaval, even though they're quietly lurking there at the tail end of the top ten, they could potentially work some strategy here. I could see them potentially doing some fuel saving not pushing each other too hard they might become a factor here late in this one yeah absolutely i mean the the only change in order in the uh in the race compared to where they started was robin esterson getting ahead of Juani lopez and uh, those three working together here in this event they'll uh, they'll not be fighting the team manager will be uh, basically saying to them right we're in a good position let's work together let's push ourselves forward and let's get a few more positions because Jake Stead just in ninth place ahead of them that McLaren uh, has been a little bit struggling in the opening stages of this race but it's a battle further up that we can look at as well because Esther Racing Aaron Cholak all over the back of that set that number 74 and uh, Trans Tasman as well, they're closing in. So uh, you've got a number of cars getting in close in in, in different uh, battles here. Really good to see this, uh, this big group of cars all further down. Trans Tasman, they're getting in with Jared Philcell, uh, getting involved with Pure Racing Team Yellow in battle. And uh, as we've got a change, Marin Cholak making the move down the inside at turn number one. We've seen one or two moves into turn number one there in this race. And Marin just makes that move. Will he make it stick? Yes, he does. As he goes into turn number three here, Randy, because uh, that has got him up now up into fourth, uh, fifth place. Sorry, he'll be looking forward now. Seeing that pure racing team blue car in the distance and thinking, right, that's my next target now. 
Yeah, it really is, but good luck getting those pure racing team cards because they seem to be really good in a longer point of the stint. And that's actually something interesting that just that we can compare on some of these Audis. Because you look at that core machine, that course in racing black car, Ricardo Castroledo, super quick through the first opening laps and, of course, in qualifying. But he's sort of been on the move backwards since about six or seven laps into the stint. Compare that to the likes of the pure racing team cars, both the red car that's leading and the fourth place running one pure racing team blue. They both came on somewhere around 10, 11, 12 laps into their stint and both of them both when uh, Max Bedeke got a big run as well as when Max Winnegg they both kind of hit tune and started really putting down some quick times pretty much at the same window in time so interesting to see that some of these cars even in the same manufacturers uh, are having different tire wear and different pace at different phases of the run Yep, so uh, what we'll do then is we'll give you a bit of race spot fan immersion. The first of the afternoon here, we're going to go on board with Pure Racing Team Blue, Maximilian Venegg, as he comes closer to Heusevac Comet Spot, Kerb Kushube. There we go then, lap on board there with Maximilian Wernig in the Pure Racing Team blue car as he's trying to chase down that Husseval Coma sports car of Keiko Shube. Retirees from this race so far, we've got six of them. SRT Esport, Torsen Motorsport Blue, Teo Martin Esports, Triton Racing, SDK Apex Racing UK and Euphoria Racing GT. All of them have uh, been involved in instance and we'll go on board then with the fa racing g2 car and uh, connery i know you're uh, not just involved with uh, esports in terms of um, motorsport but also uh, other sort of esports as well you talk about we talk about the um, g2 organization having fernando alonso come on board for the racing side of things has really brought a lot of attention to them from a racing point of view hasn't it yeah, it really has. And when, when people talk about this team, you always talk about, oh, no, F Fernando Alonso is the, the, you know, the, the, uh, the, the main figurehead behind it. He's uh, you know, pumping all the money into the team. But people do tend to forget as well, especially if people are not into other esports, that uh, G2 Esports uh, are a pretty big organization by themselves. Uh, they have uh, you know, pro Counter-Strike teams. They have uh, pro League of Legends teams as well. So they are not small by any means. And they do have the, uh, the resources uh, to be able to help sim racing with their, their ventures into it, in, in, and uh, especially into these iRacing events as well. 
Uh, the, the popularity and the exposure that Fernando Alonso gives them is obviously fantastic. It brings us a lot of new viewers, but I think people don't give enough credit to G2 as an organization itself. Yeah, certainly uh, they bring a lot to the uh, to the world of I racing, and uh, they're certainly doing a good job here, not just in this series, but in the World Championship Grand Prix series as well, which we saw last week. Not the best of days for a couple of the drivers last week, but uh, certainly they're uh, bringing a lot to this event. Freddie Rasmussen's just set his personal best for the afternoon so far, 158.499. Compared to the last lap of Max Benecke of 158.527, so not much time difference between them, but he's dropped back to about almost a second back here, Randy. And uh, is this just a case of just running his own pace, just keeping in that slipstream to keep that draft? And uh, as we are coming up towards the first round of pit stops as well in the next sort of 20 minutes or so. Could very well be. I mean, at the end of the day, if you're Freddie, you haven't let that pure racing team car get out to too much of a lead, and you can always work the slipstream, save a little bit of gas. But at the same time, we've seen these pure racing team cars be very, very quick on the late run. And speak of that, Max Winnick, he just made the move on Keikachubi at the hairpin. So put two pure cars in your top three. Yeah, absolutely. They uh, they they have really been uh, going well today. A pure racing team that's showing that pace here today. And uh, Max Winnick doing a really good job in this opening stint up four positions in the race so far in this event up ahead of uh Heusevalt co motorsports um so uh, basically they're, uh, they're really showing a good job here at pure racing team they've got a good setup and a good uh, good couple of teams there but uh, going back to that you know you look at freddie rasmussen he's been dropping back so they've been having They've been having the, the pace there, and they're keeping on the pace, but Pure Racing Team just seem to have that extra tenth of a second there, don't they, in their pockets, Randy? Yeah, they definitely seem to, I and I'm curious what it is they might have going on in the setup, whether it might be aero or what the deal is, but the fact that they have the cars running this amazingly on late run pace is pretty extraordinary because they are the class of the field right now once you get about 20 minutes into the run, and, well, that kind of opens up the discussion. If there's anyone that's going to be strong in the double stint, it's going to be those pure racing team cars. As uh, further down as well. You've got cars looking. Jesus Cecilia is trying to get involved here. He's, uh, he's actually uh, ahead of VRS Quad. The Sim Sport who get really close there for P7 and P8. Almost contact between the two of them. Matt Backham really uh, getting to know the back of that uh, of the Odox Motorsport car. Odox running wide there into Big Ben. That's going to compromise them down towards the hairpin once again. As they're going to the outside now, as Matt Backham is showing that outside line, is Odox are getting really close to squeezing each other here. A little bit of side to side contact between the two of them. It's oh, a man. bit of brinkmanship here. And uh, well, I don't think Matt Backham was too pleased about that, Connery, because he's flashing the lights at him. Yeah, the, the universal symbol of uh, I'm not happy about that or get out of my way. Those are the two meanings of flashing the lights here in the in these GT uh, in these GT cars. So what, what does Matt Backup do in reply to that one now? Does he be, does he try again? Uh, at least here? Nope, he's not going to, to way too far back uh, to be able to try the move. There's a little bit of oversteer for his Cecilia coming off of turn number 13 there, tower corner. But the thing is, the momentum shift isn't enough back to VRS got a sim spot to be able to capitalize on that mistake. Odox did have a little bit of damage on the rear before that incident, and I don't think it will cause that much between the two of them as well. Just a little bit of uh, rubbing, and of course, as we all know, rubbing is racing, especially in GT cars here, but uh, do a little bit too much rubbing, it can cause damage to your aerodynamics, it can really affect you over the longer run as they're heading down towards Sunset Bend once again, and uh, Matt Backham he wants by here, Randy, and he wants by sooner rather than later by the looks of that uh, body language in that car. And he does. There is history with these two teams. Well, at least uh, one of these drivers in this team, Jesus Cecilia, of course, had a run in with Vieras Quinn and Simsport in the first season of this championship at Brands Hatch. Nearly cost Quinn and Simsport the championship. So I have a feeling that just from a team situation, even though that Mac was on radicals at that point, that there's going to be a little bit of, uh, let's say, not, not so nice feelings coming the way towards this Odox car. And of course, Jesus wasn't on Odox back in those days. But you have two of the most aggressive drivers in the sim, Mac 
Mike used to be much more aggressive than he is. He's sort of calmed down the last year or two since joining Coanda. But Jesus Cecilia is still as aggressive as always um, as they head down back down towards the hairpin. So if these guys come get a little bit close together once again, I wouldn't rule out fireworks. And uh, yeah, these two, they're, uh, they're absolutely giving it, they're going hell for leather, they're pushing these cars to the limit, and we've seen that with Hazel Cecilia, just getting those little bits of moments of oversteer on the exit of corners here, and uh, as we go into the right-hander once again, heading towards Collier, tricky corner this one, the car always feels on edge around there, and then it's tricky corner into uh, Tower once again, turn 13. Cecilia just running that little bit wide, bringing the dust onto track. We're going to see a lot of dust get brought on the track there at that point of the track. Uh, what I want to do uh, quickly is just bring in uh, Mr. Will Vincent for special comments because, well, we've had uh, almost 50 minutes of this, uh, of this race. And really, what's caught your eye in this one? What really stood out for you today? The pass um, from Benake over Freddie Rasmussen, I think, is the big one. It's one of the things that we won't talk about immediately, but we'll be reflecting upon that over the course of this season. Because not only has Benake got past Frederick Rasmussen, he's now pulled out a 1.5 second advantage over him. And if you have a look at the lap times over the last couple of laps, well, Rasmussen has lost himself a second over the last three laps. And I think that's really important because FA uh, Racing GT2 Logitech, of course, they came home second in the first race of this championship. They had the lead at the start of this one, but again, they are slipping down outside of your victory thing. And I know there's a certain driver in Australia that's thumping his head against a, a keyboard, a mouse, anything that's Logitech owned, especially also a monitor. Yeah, absolutely, certainly won't be uh, uh, too pleased about it. Although saying that, second place, well, yeah. once again, you know, yeah, the second place in the championship, the leaders of the championship, TTL Esports, are down in 14th place at the moment. Joshua Rogers is not having a good day of it at all. Maybe show him a little bit why he's so special around Bathurst. But you look at the teams that are involved in that championship. Odox Motorsports, of course, in racing black. Sixth place for Core, seventh place for Odox. Pure Racing Team Blue, they, they don't, they were, um, Pure Racing Team Blue, they aren't even in the top 10 in terms of the championship. So FA Racing G2 at this moment in time, not in a bad position really when you think about it in terms of the bigger context, they'll be pulling out on the key mm. people that they're fighting with, right? uh, Will. Yeah, and that's the thing that's worth thinking about as well, is that I can, I, I can almost positively say from the FA G2 camp, they were saying, Allow the pass to happen. There's a bigger thing in play. Is Evolution Racing Team number 30 lose the position? To talk about TTL Esports, of course, Paul. They were involved in the incident at the start of the motor race. They lost themselves a ton of positions at the start. Qualified at the rear um, of the top 10. Fell down to, what, P20 on the first lap because of that huge crash that took place. They were probably the worst team affected because they did get tagged in the rear as well. They recovered to P number 14 right now, but Joshua Rogers... I think now has to do a lot of work on pit stops and I think he's going to have to go risky and will take no tyres in order to try and gain some track position and that might hurt him but I think it's a risk he has to take right now. He, uh, he certainly does need to take that risk as we're uh, heading in towards the pit stop phase. We're about 10 minutes before the hour of the race being up. Odox Motorsport Samsung, number 16 car, has moved ahead of Tommaso Carla in the Frostmaster Mavano car down in 16th place. So uh, basically change of position for them and... Uh, really, Frostmaster Mavano in that BMW, they've really been struggling here today. Connery and uh, in, t in general the BMW seem to be struggling because I believe they're actually the highest place BMW in this field and down in 17th place. Yeah that definitely looks to be the case as I'm just uh, trying to confirm that one for you yeah it definitely looks like uh, they are the highest place BMW so the you know the BMW did get that balance of performance change of course coming into this event they did uh, gain an extra 10 kilograms of ballast uh, so I wouldn't have thought that would have affected them so much, but it, it seems like there's a, a little bit more going on in terms of the ballast there. Maybe it affects the BMWs more at this track uh, more than some other cars because the Audi did in fact get a 25 kilogram ballast, cha uh, ballast change, but they're still at the front of the field. They certainly are, but uh, the, the, 
it's maybe handling its weight change a little bit better than some of the other cars, especially that BMW, as we're uh, headed down the Ullman straight then. I'm looking at uh, your uh, front pack here. Baron Cholak is ahead of Cato Castro Lado in that Corsin Racing Black car and uh, Randy Corsin Racing Black down three positions from where they started here but Castroleda just seems to have calmed himself down now. He had that little bit of period where he was getting himself a little bit flustered, it looked like. He's now calmed down and he's, uh, he's in that sixth place where he seems comfortable at the moment. Yeah, he really has, so, and that's really good for him because Ricardo Castroleto, he's always been a driver that's potentially very, very quick, but he gets somewhat ruffled easily in these races is what I've kind of tended to find out, and that's between his stint at Radicals, and it's sort of carried on over here to core, and we sort of saw that when he started having those little fights with both Kei Kashibi and then with Marin Kolak and the Esther Racing Team. He was uh, very, very aggressive defending after he made that mistake through turn three and four complex if you remember but i think this little kind of clean bit of track out in front of him and out behind him is going to be good for him as we're inside now of the last 10 minutes of this first hour which means pit stops likely going to be happening soon they certainly are and uh, we're going to see a mix of strategies you'll see some teams take that little less fuel and go just the hour where some teams will basically just absolutely run the car dry and uh, take the uh, go as long as possible on the stints uh, for that one. It's going to be interesting strategies calls here. There's also going to be the interesting thing about tyres, Connery, because this track, it's an abrasive surface. It's a tough track to race at. OK, the track temperature is 27 degrees Celsius on, uh, on the deck. So it's not the hottest conditions here, but certainly, as we say, with the coarse nature of this track, really going to be struggling to double stint these tyres. Yeah, they probably will be, but you could argue with the cold track temperatures. The, uh, it is an abrasive surface, as you said, but maybe the cold tra uh, track temp will uh, try to cancel it out a little bit. So uh, those are the sorts of things the teams will be looking at right now. They'll be communicating with the drivers. Okay, how does the car feel at the end of this first stint? Do you think you can go one more stint on the tyres, bearing in mind that you're taking in uh, a full fuel load uh, at, at this stop? So it, it, it could be the main difference between people and their strategies. Who goes for the double stint and who plays it safe by taking tyres? And, well, I'm just looking at the times as I go across the line. Freddie Rasmussen just setting the uh, current best lap of that last lap, a 58.3. So he's uh, just having a little bit of a response there to Max uh, Million Beneke out at the front. But there's 8.2 seconds between the two of them, so that's really stretched out. Your front few cars have stretched out a bit here in this race. So they've all sort of got themselves into positions. It's really uh, Jesus Cecilia and uh, Ricardo Castroledo and also Mac Backham a battle for 6th, 7th and 8th that's got ongoing in this one but they've got a little bit of separation between the, the three of them not the greatest gaps but certainly a little bit of separation where they're not rubbing doors and banging wing mirrors and uh, then you're looking further down and you've got the Vendeville cars all three of them together as well in 10th, 11th and 12th they've not really moved from those positions but they have stayed sort of uh, stagnant in terms of... I don't think that gap has standards. changed in 28 laps between those Vendaval cars. No, it hasn't. It, it, it's pretty much stayed as it is. This is, this is the thing, and, and I want to touch on it, Randy, because we're reaching five minutes before the hour then. Strategies, you know, you, you've, you've been involved in various... Um, various big events and where uh, you've got these endurance events where it's long races. What sort of strategies do you think is going to work out for today here? Well, I mean, it's just a three-hour long race. It's going to quite simply be a two-stopper. You're going to basically fill the tank up when you come down pit road. You may be a little bit of a short fill, but nothing crazy. That's going to depend if you want to go to the hour or if you want to go a little bit further on. And then really the only strategy we're going to see is if people can push these tires an extra stint. I don't think a triple stint is going to work, even though the weather is relatively cool. We saw it didn't pan out at Bathurst. And... Well, it's sort of odd to say that a track is harder on the tires than Bathurst, but if there's one that it is, it's definitely Sebring, as abrasive as it is, and with all the bumps, and, well, I, I, 
we couldn't even pull uh, a Team Carmera. We couldn't pull off a double stint in the Audi for the Sebring 12 hour. We, we tested it and we were three and a half seconds per lap slower upon exiting the pits on old tires on heavy fuel. It's a little bit cooler today. So maybe those tires might last a little bit longer, but at the same time, I don't know. I think for the most part up and down the grid, we're likely gonna see, I think full stops pretty much all the way through. We might see some people risk it, but I'm kind of hesitant on whether the double stint's gonna work or not. And don't forget live timing and scoring is available racebot.tv forward slash timing check it out if you want to keep an eye on uh, your favorites in this race one that i did notice on the timing screen personal best lap that last lap fifth place esther racing team marin churlak 58 two that's two tenths of a second faster than your two leaders here connery so uh, all of a sudden he's got the pace there and he's got the bit between his teeth because he's uh, he's catching up to that call uh, hotspot call motorsport car yeah, Trollac is running really, really well at this stage. And, uh, well, we're only about five, six, seven minutes until we uh, get in towards the pit stop window. So he's going to make up, try to make up these positions uh, before that happens. You don't want to be trapped behind a car when you're coming in for the pit stops. And I think the hoisting our core motorsports car hasn't really been the greatest uh, in terms of pace in the, in this first stint. They've just just been dropping back uh, every time. It's usually them getting past rather than then rather than them passing someone. So Esther Racing team, they could have that in mind now, knowing that Jose Valcón most had to have had to defend a lot of positions already. Certainly are into Sunset Bend once again. Then the battle for fourth place. Jose Valcón Motorsports, Keiko Shube, and then Esther Racing, Marin Cholak between the two of them as they go across the line once again and Cholak just getting caught up in that draft but uh, three tenths of a second faster than Kashube on that last lap so it's really catching up Kashube running wide out of turn number one going into the dirt there you can get away with it but not every time you can see cars lose control there and uh, get uh, get into the walls so uh, certainly Kashube is pushing hard. He's trying to keep that position. And uh, he's certainly trying to hold on to fourth place as they're heading in towards the pit stop phase of this race. By the way, your leader, Maximilian Bineke, has uh, just uh, put in another fast lap, 58-2 from him, compared to Freddy Rasmussen, 58-4. So a little bit of a response from your leader over Freddy Rasmussen just to pull out that gap just that little bit more. It's getting close to two seconds, the gap between your two leaders. And this is now, Randy, where he's really starting to get to the point where he's breaking that draft. And when you lose that draft, all of a sudden your leader just seems to then be able to just pull away at will. Like I said, these pure racing team cars have been phenomenal on the late run. And the pace that Max has right now is impressive because that gap sat at about a second or so for a long time. But the last few laps, Max Beneke has been able to just reach that gap uh, out to another full, like you just said, full second is two seconds plus and gaining right now as they work themselves down the Ullman straight. And I think pit stop window officially opens right here right now. So as cars work themselves off towards sunset, I would expect to see the early comers this time. I'd be very surprised to see cars go 32 laps. I think 30 to 31 is about going to be the stint length for today. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, here comes Freddy across the line, and here comes Freddy. So it starts now already. The strategy is coming into play. Freddy Rasmussen onto pit road. Then we don't expect to see any Kashube change of driver. Him. Oh God, grief! You see how uh, loose Kashube was coming into pit road as well. He was all over the place. But we expect these drivers that start the race to stay in for another stint here, Connery, and then uh, swap drivers at the final pit stop. You would imagine here today. Yeah, that's certainly what is going to happen, at least in terms of Freddy Rasmussen. Keiko Shube is going to stay in the car as well. Castro Ledo gets himself stopped in the box as well. Will stay in the car for yet another sin. There's Rico Alitalo for Gleason North just heading off of the pit lane right now. We've got Esther Racing Team, Odox, Vendaval Sim Racing White, TTL Esports, all down on towards the lane and multiple others further down as well. Uh, I don't see many driver changes going on, so most of these drivers are going to stay out for one more. It's, it's just a pit party. That's what it is. Everybody, almost everybody's coming. Coming in here today and uh, well, uh, getting their uh, Sunoco 
fuel on board and away goes Freddie Rasmussen from the front then so that pit stop was a 41 second pit stop for Freddie Rasmussen in that FA Racing G2 Logitech G car out of pit exit and pit exit is really tricky here we've not really spoken about it and that's because of that reason because Freddie Rasmussen was really close to getting taken out there by uh, another competitor who was coming around that was Corsin Racing Silver and it's a tricky pit exit there for them as we uh, keep an eye on your race leaders as they uh, see whether Max Beneke comes onto pit road this time Randy. And heading down the Ullman straight now and let's see what Max has up his sleeve. I will say for these cars that are stretching it the extra lap, the fact that you're those cars that just hit pit road, the fact that they're coming out within uh, in traffic is going to be relevant. Even if it's only for half a lap or just for this out lap, it's going to be important. And Max Beneke, he's well off the throttle. His trip down pit road hits right now. Pure Racing Team Blue will be next in line. That's going to be Max Winnegg running in second. And they are also hitting pit road. So 31 laps. I think it's about the most you can do. I think Kawanda might be the next car coming through in line yep and uh, we'll see how it goes then so your leader onto pit road there max benecki he's gonna hit his mark absolutely spot on and uh, he does that so he's gonna see how long it takes for the pit stop as the rest of the field that didn't take their pit stops they're coming in one team that isn't coming in actually is pure racing team black dennis grabowski is going an extra lap here so pure racing team with the black car going up into the lead of this race but we expect to see all the others that uh, hadn't uh, hadn't made their pit stop to come onto pit road at this time so where is the FA racing car they are coming round into Sunset Bend and uh, well let's have a look 41 seconds for the pit stop for FA racing 41.5 for Beneke as he's coming out of pit road. Will he hold on to that lead coming out of pit exit? And the answer is yes. Yes, he does hold on to that position and uh, comes out of pit road. Plenty of gap between him and that FA racing car. It's quite a big gap as well. Four seconds there, Connery, between the two of them. And that time has really helped them out there. And uh, well, what on earth has happened to uh, that outlap of uh, Freddie Rasmussen? That's, that's awful from him. That is awful, is that the stop times weren't all that different, only a couple of tenths of a second in it, so that's not the reason that Freddie Rasmussen has lost two seconds on that stop. That is uh, just a, either a horrible outlap for FA Racing G2 or an insane in-lap for PRT. It, well, let's have a look then. Pit stop times, not that much between them in comparison, but Beneke in second place. The man out who's out in the lead, actually, is Denis Gorovsky. Uh, as I was saying, in that uh, Pure Racing Team black car, you would expect to see him onto pit road this time by because 32 laps is pushing it for fuel. He must be uh, one of the most efficient drivers in the grid to be able to get it 32 laps because he's the other one who's managed to do it, but he's onto pit road now is uh, Denis Grabowski. So there's the change for them. They're going to come down onto pit road, get their service. So it's going to be that Pure Racing Team car in your lead and it's going to be the red car of Maximilian Beneke once they come down the Ullman straight once again and this pit stop phase is thrown up a real bit of a surprise there Randy we didn't expect there to be that much of a difference on outlaps when you compare the two of them Freddie Rasmussen and Beneke yeah, you're right. The only thing I can think, like I said, is that there was a little bit of traffic for Freddie when he came down pit road. That's really the only thing in my mind that could uh, make up for such the difference. But I don't know. But regardless, Max is going to take whatever advantage he can get as Frederick Rasmussen is going to cycle past the line. And well, with this first round of pit stops, everything is pretty much spread out up and down our field here in terms of fights. Yeah, absolutely. We've had about an hour and five minutes of this race go on. The first round of pit stops have been taking place, and it is pure racing team red. They're in the lead of this one, Maximilian Beneke. Fernando Alonso Racing G2 Logitech G are in second place with Freddie Rasmussen. Third place for pure racing team blue with Maximilian Beneke. Uh, Pure Racing Team Black, by the way, long pit stop, minute and ten. That's a full uh, cycle because they have actually changed driver and Sebastian Schmallenbach is in behind the wheel of that car. So full service for the black car. 
though. That's going to be interesting to see how that one goes on. Uh, fourth place is Court Sim Racing Black with Hoisting Valk Combo Sports in fifth place. Odox in sixth. Vendevil seventh. And Vendervolt Sim Racing White in eighth place. Interesting to note also, Esther Racing Team, a long pit stop, 56.5 seconds. Marion Cholak still in behind the wheel of the car, down in 12th place. So they must have taken tyres, so we'll see how they get on in this one. You are watching the Virtual Racing School GT World Championship here on iRacing Live, brought to you by Racebot TV here on YouTube Gaming, on Facebook and on Twitch. And we'll be right back after these few messages.
time for a mid-race update here on Racebot TV and on iRacing Live and breaking news. We have had issues with PRT. Max Wenig has had himself technical difficulties. He is out of the motor race for the time being. The story of the day so far is that PRT Red, Max Benake, is leading the way as well fa uh, racing gt logitech g were leading the way early on we're looking at them right now but they have fallen back to three and a half seconds behind your race leader course in racing black had a bit of a difficult pitch off as well they are now get this seven seconds behind um the fa racing g2 team and hikes in the world core um motorsport are catching them very very quickly We'll take you through that on a race what TV race bike here on the Virus GT World Championship as well. Paul, one of the things that's worth noting is that now we've got a nice battle going on with P number three because Core Motorsports are closing quickly. Yeah, they certainly are closing rather quickly here. And uh, Keg Sherbates uh, got the bit between his teeth once again. Full fuel of uh, full gas tank of fuel and uh, he's going to be chasing them down another battle going on further down ttl esports have got themselves involved up into ninth place now it's a really good recovery drive from joshua rogers he's got himself past van devil sim racing yellow on this last lap and he's trying to uh, push forward and make it uh, another place with the inex racing red so jack sedgwick under pressure as well in the eighth place well yeah and connery of course this is not the only event that is going on this weekend on race what tv we have a lot it's one of our biggest weekends ever in terms of sim racing and we've got ourselves also the 24 hours of Le Mans neo style coming up in just a few hours yes we do start of that one will be at 5 p.m gmt join uh, myself jake uh, uh justin prince and alvin Nieves, at least for the first hour of that one maybe we'll even get some randy chanath in there as well but whoop, we'll whoop. be bringing 24 hours straight of coverage here on Racebot tv and on iRacing live we've also got v8 super track series as well 9 p.m gmt we've also got dirt night as well and randy chanath chris hone jonathan simone will be taking you through that one it's gonna be a long event. saturday grc at iowa and sprints at Palooza. we all have a very busy day yeah, Racebot TV live time and scoring. Racebot.tv forward slash timing for that one. Randy, in terms of the strategy, we saw almost all the teams stick it with their first driver and do themselves a solo stint. We've had one or two go longer. Marion Trollock had a long pit stop, but he stays inside that race car. We've had tire changes and driver changes for Koala Sim Sports and for Simicute NX Racing Blue. What's going to happen next? That's going to be really interesting. That number eight VRS kind of sim sport car, I think, well, they went with a driver swap. Mitchell De Jong is in. I think Mitchell is going to be in this car to the end 100%, and I suspect we're going to see a no-tire stop for them on the next stop, so that's going to be interesting. Now, keeping an eye on the pace, this is going to be one of these things for Coanda for these three-hour races. We saw that Mack and Mitchell car, although actually it was David Mitchell at Spa last year sort of getting in this issue where they took tires on the first stop where everyone skipped and they were sort of immensely off-cycle the entire race. The three-hour races is not so much an issue because well everyone's pretty much 100 taking tires at some point or another uh so they should be able to just skip them next time and they'll be able to make up a bunch of those spots back keeping an eye on the pace though in terms of the old tires and the double stinting despite their pace in the uh, at the end of the last stint, Pure Racing Team Red currently three tenths of a second slower than Freddie Rasmussen, who's doing 59 twos right now. Yeah, and there's the thing. I'm going to have a look quick, quickly at what is going on with PRT Red. Max Beneke is leading the way. He has himself that 2.9 second advantage over FA Racing Duty Logitech G right now. And the best lap time that has been done today has been a 157.9. Well, been okay. Last time by a 159.4. Randy, that is a second and two thirds slower. Not the three and a half seconds you were talking about. So this opens a window and opens a very interesting question. Does a team dare to do no tires? 
it's it's going to be tight. It's going to be tight. You know, like you said, looking at the lap times right now, they're a second off of what they were earlier. But to me, if if they don't, if they cannot bring that time down to under a full second, uh, it it I don't actually think the double stinting will be worth it because it's seven seconds per tire, and they're doing 31, 32 laps a stint. If they're second off every lap. They're taking, they're, they're at a four to five second disadvantage by double stinting the tires. So unless these guys kind of, unless these cars, if the fuel burns off, which is so oftentimes a thing, a lot of times the tires will sort of be struggling when you initially do the double stint and you're, and they're really, really heavy. But once you get a few laps into the books, the weight starts to come off the car. The tires do kind of come into their own. Uh, if you're not within a second, if not less, I don't know if it's actually going to be worth the double stim. Right now, that Fernando Alonso racing GT Logitech car, he's pushing really hard. But Max Benecke has answered. He goes to a 131. Yep. And don't forget, we've got more IndyCar coverage tomorrow. That'll be the first round of the 2018 Logitech, not Logitech, Logical um, IndyCar, <laughs> classic IndyCar series that will take place at Homestead Miami Speedway, a part of your monster weekend of coverage here on Racebot TV and I Racing Live. And well, before I hand it back to you, Paul, it's a big weekend in terms of motorsports. Of course, second round in terms of the eight supercars. We've got ourselves Formula One, NASCAR's going on, IndyCar's taking a few weeks out, but wow, we've got it busy. I, I tell you what, I, I wish I'd have factored in the fact that there was the Formula One happening with before I uh, made my commitments to uh, to various things. I'm stewarding on Neo later on, so uh, <laughs> as well as broadcasting the Neo Endurance Series as well for Race Spot. So uh, busy old weekend for me. Plus, I'm doing the V8 Super Trucks. Yeah, I, I've got no time. I think I'm going to get about two minutes of sleep this weekend. Well, back to you. The commentary team then of Connery Maddock and Randy Chetneth, led by Paul Matthew Smith. Yeah, thank you very much. Well then, so as we've been mentioning, Maximilian Beneke in the lead of this one, 2.8 seconds ahead of Frederick Rasmussen in that FA Racing G2 car. And that battle for third place still ongoing at the moment between Corsi Racing Black and Heuser Vodco Motorsports, Ricardo Castroledo and Keke Shube, uh, respectively for them. Odox Motorsport, Jesus Cecilia up to fifth place after the pit stops with Vendevil Sim Racing Blue up to sixth place now with Vendevil Sim Racing White now involved in a battle here with uh, Inex Racing and also with TTL Esports. And uh, Connor, it's good to see that... Uh, that Josh Rogers is able to uh, get stuck in and get involved in these battles after, uh, and I'm sure he'll admit himself, not the best qualifying and not the best opening to the race. Yeah, there's a the, that bodywork is kind of a little bit dented on the uh, on on the back there and also on the uh, on the side. So it's been in the wars just a little bit, but uh, still running quite well. Is Joshua Rogers and TTL Esports? Of course, this is your point leader uh, right now coming into this event, and I expect that kind of to not be the case if they finish the way uh, they are at the moment. Uh, if they do finish the way they are, PRT Red and FA Racing G2 will be tied leaders on points. Yep, it's going to be a fascinating season, this one. And i uh, tell you what, hopefully, touch wood, we won't have uh, last year's one-team riot over this series, and we're going to have a real close battle all the way to the end. As uh, Inex, Jack Cedric is looking a little bit close now. It's in Terry Kekkonen in the Van Devil Sim Racing white car. All these positions that are getting mixed up in the pit stops, as uh, we saw... At an hour and 40 minutes remaining in this one. I tell you what, this certainly, uh, this certainly has been really intriguing. How uh, this one has uh, has been so far, and I can't believe that we've already had a minute, uh, an hour and 20 uh, of this one heading in to Tower once again. This battle for seventh place. Kekkonen doing well, holding on to that position at the moment. Man from the Club Finland versus the man from UK and Ireland, Jack Cedric, and the Australian New Zealand man of Joshua Rogers. Two different continents. Well, I tell you what, Josh Rogers has got the bit between his teeth at the moment here, um, Randy, because he, he really wants those positions and he needs them as well for the championship. 
Yeah, he definitely does. So for Josh Rogers, I mean, he came out and made a statement. The Australians in general the last year or two have been trying their hardest to reach out, be a lot more international on the iRacing scene. Josh Rogers has sort of, I think, been the forefront of that. Evolution Racing Team sort of waved the flag to the beginning point of last year, but they sort of dropped off after that monster performance where they had two cars on the podium. And, well, they kind of Ben Cornetted and were me mediocre at best the entire rest of the championship. So for Josh Rogers to dominate the way he did at Bathurst, to qualify 13th and only just barely be running inside the top 10 after dominating the entirety of that race, backpacking that TTL car to a win, not looking so good for him either. You got away with words, haven't you, Randy? That's for sure. <laughs> I am a poet. No, I'm not a poet. I just, I just, I quote poets. The great poet, Darren Genji. The, the, the bard of California, Randy Cheddar, as they're headed, as they're headed into the hairpin then. And I tell you what, Jack Sedgwick here, Connery, he's looking a bit keen here. He wants to get ahead of that Van Devil Sim Racing white car, but he knows he's got it from behind as well. So he's got to pick and choose when he makes those moves here. Yep, and uh, that Ferrari is one of the only Ferraris in, uh, in the only GT3 Ferraris in this field right now, and it seems like Enix, uh, uh, that they're kind of uh, the team that goes for the the odd cars, the Ferrari. They've gone for the uh, McLaren uh, in, in their other effort as well, so uh, they're perhaps uh, going more for the driver preference rather than the overall speed, because sometimes it's more important to have your car, your driver, more comfortable in a particular type of car, even though it's not uh, the fastest. Uh, in on paper so uh, looking at the retirements whilst this battle is going on we had a big incident at the start of the race that dropped six of our drivers out uh, teams out euphoria racing sdk apex racing uk triton racing tail martin esports torsten both spot blue and srt esport all retired from the race at the start of that uh, of the race and there was that big incident uh, in your pack. Evolution Racing Team 27 is out of the race as well and so too Radicals Online, the 17 car out of this event as well so we've got 8 cars out so far started with a 49 car grin, 41 cars remaining in this one keeping an eye on that lead battle and I tell you what, another 2 tenths of a second quicker is Freddy Rasmussen over Max Benecke but we saw that uh, Randy in the uh, in the first stint was that basically that that first opening 20 minutes of the stint that uh, FA Racing G2 car did have that little edge of that pure racing team red car but then that pure racing team red car seemed to just come into its own then thing is though that they're still both on old tires so I don't know if maybe the pure racing it could have something to do with ride height Maybe as the car sort of gets uh, some weight gets burned off the front of the car, sort of gets the rake in an ideal situation for that pure racing team car. I don't really know. Initially, I, I honestly thought it would have been tires, but the fact that both cars are on the same sets of tires now and in a similar fuel situation, I, I don't really know what the pace differential it is, um, but Freddie is really flying out there. He just did a 58.9, so two tenths of a lap quicker or so is what it's been. And like I've been talking about since the pit stops happened, we're sort of right on the brink right on the edge of uh, those teams that did the double stint making it worth it we're taking a look at josh rogers and he goes flying through bishop looking at that nx ferrari who's fighting with one of the vendeval cars yeah certainly are uh, this uh, this keen battle going on here in your uh, pack and i'll tell you what van devil sim racing yellow are kind of just on the cusp of getting involved in this battle as well Juanny lopez is uh, kind of tagging on to the back of these cars and this is the thing they're, they're all slowing each other down once again they're all getting involved in these battles and uh, it's certainly going to be interesting to see how this one goes through the final corner sunset bend once again start a lap 43 for these three drivers heading into turn number one now bumpy tricky section of the track here and a nasty bump there on the exit of turn number one through to that little 
right hander there that isn't really a corner and into three this left hander and this tight twisty section you go over the curbs here but you don't want to attack the curbs too much because it can be a bit vicious as you go through five into six big bend as uh, in its racing justin brunner has made it ahead of bardell sim racing up at 16th place brunner de Carmo losing the position look at jack cedric now looking to the inside getting in the mirrors into the hairpin was thinking about making a move there, Conray, but not quite close enough to outbreak into that hairpin. Yeah, it looks like Jack Cedric definitely has the pace advantage uh, right now, but he's still just not able to get past on the break turn into uh, Cunningham Corner now. And there's Joshua Rodgers right behind, making it so that all three of these guys have to follow each other so, so tightly, coming through turn 11, turn 12, up towards turn number 13 as well. And Rodgers, oh, he, he could have gone for the slingshot move there, but these guys are just following each other so, so closely. And uh, I have to wonder when all of this is going to crack. Well, uh, hopefully it doesn't crack in the worst way possible. Jack Cedric looking to the outside, now to the inside of Lamar. He's going to try and make that move stick. It's going to backfire on him slightly because here comes Joshua Rogers now. He's trying to make the move. It's all going to just calm itself down again out the exit of turn 16, down the Ullman straight now, but they're all holding each other up. And here comes Juan Lopez now getting closer and closer to that battle and in towards turn 17, Sunset Bend once again. Rogers looking really close now to the back of Sedgwick's car. And uh, one little move like that, Randy, from Jack Sedgwick, and it can put him under pressure from behind here as oh, Rogers got a little bit loose on the exit of the final corner. A little bit of a wiggle there from Josh, but Jack's doing a good job in that Ferrari. It's not a car we saw too much of at Bathurst. I'm a little surprised to see it as underrepresented as it is. There's a lot of hype for the Ferraris, both the GTE and the GT3 car that we have in the Sims. A couple drivers pushing a little bit wide on the exit one, kicking up some dust, but that Ferrari has good speed. I did a lot of testing with that here at Sebring the last couple weeks as well. It really drives and feels similar to the Audi. Aero balance is a little bit more uh, forward, feels a little bit more on edge, but the correct dock that I managed to get my hand on was mighty quick here at Sebring. So we see the battle between the three race cars here then, down into the hairpin, and uh, still Centuri Kekkonen showing why he is in that Van Devil Sim Racing white car, really pushing on, holding on to that position. We've seen many a time how uh, good a driver he is. When Cholak, by the way, is catching up to the back of Wani Lopez. And this is going to be an interesting battle between these two. Because uh, Cholak, I believe, took at least two tyres in that last pit stop here, Connery. So maybe a little bit fresher rubber on the, you would imagine, on the rear tyres to give him that better uh, stability in the rear. Yeah, and if what Randy has said to uh, you know is said has said to be believed, then the 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 cars on the double stint they are very very close to even making it worth it. So. Uh, Marin Scholak and Esther Racing Team may have gone the other way. They've gone, okay, we do want uh, you know at least some of these tyres to put on the car for this second stint, and let's just see how well that's going to work out for them. They are running very, very quick lap times indeed. Most of this pack ahead of them are running in the two-minute mark. They are running low 159s. It's so heading in towards Sunset Bend. So we've got two battles going on here, and well... Cedric has made that move through Sunset Bend. Great work from Cedric to make that move stick. But here comes Rogers now on the inside of Kekkonen. Down into turn number one. And Rogers is going to make the move. So in two corners, Kekkonen has lost two positions. Here's a look at it again. And it was Cedric into that Sunset Bend. And then Rogers into turn number one, Randy. Good driving from Rogers to take advantage of the car that's been... Uh, really was out of position on the exit of that turn last turn there yeah, good driving both by Rogers as well as Cedric to get those moves done. But like you said, very uh, good opportunistic and aggressive moves from Josh Rogers. That's part of the reason he's been so good. And I think part of that be coming from his experience in the V8 stuff, coming from on the Australia land. They are very, very, a very, very aggressive group of guys. I'll tell you that from watching the Aussies in the, in the Dirt Night broadcast. But they work themselves down towards Cunningham. It's super fun to watch, though. Jack's going to try to just keep that 
Bright orange and black machine at bay behind him. Works himself through and starts heading down towards tower. The great move as well by Jack to make that move through sunset. In my testing with the Ferrari, there was one place it really struggled trying to keep that car stable through that final corner. Didn't really like the bump. So for Jack to feel confident enough to make that move there, that NX car is mighty well engineered. We're at the halfway stage of the race here this afternoon. Pure Racing Team Red lead this one. Maximilian Pideke 2.6 seconds ahead of Frederick Rasmussen in the FA Racing G2 Logitech G car. Third place, Corson Racing Black with Hoysen Valkor Motorsports. And I do believe Jack Sedgwick is maybe going a little bit defensive early. Maybe got a bit of a slowdown penalty through Lamar. He's going to lose the position. And Joshua Rogers now up to seventh place in that one. And Sedgwick had to get out of it there. We'll carry on with the uh, run through the top eight here. Uh, in fact, uh, well... Looking at uh, Cedric now, he's really struggling, and uh, Connor, it was all about that uh, just maybe just cutting across the corner a little bit too much. You've got a slow down penalty, which the iRacing service does do if you uh, do to cut the corners, and that's cost him a position here today. Yeah, and uh, even after he did that, he did the typical thing that uh, most of these uh, pro drivers do, is that they smear out the penalty over a longer time period. So you don't have to serve that slowdown penalty immediately by stamping on the bricks. You can just lift off the throttle a little bit and get that time ticked down. It gives you a pretty generous amount of time to do that, so you don't end up losing more time than you actually have to give away for the penalty. As, uh, yeah, just carrying on through. Oh, Marichal, like, looking down the inside into the hairpin. And he's, well, he's scared when he Lopez out the way there. I believe Lopez thought he wasn't going to make the corner. But Cholak was confident, made the move stick up into 10th place now for Esther Racing. And uh, that one, spectacular light breaking move. And when he Lopez went, do you know what? You can have that. And uh, Randy probably did the best idea there, getting out the way. Yeah, he probably did. Marin is, is known for being super aggressive. We've seen that this race. He's been a handful of moves that have been very, very solid as our producer even commentates on it as he uh, gets a, a look at it through the replay. But Marin is really flying. It was sort of an interesting pit stop time. I don't know if we really got the chance to talk about that. But everyone else, you know, for the most part, about a minute and five seconds uh, for those who took tires and about 45 seconds for those who just went with full fuel and went with a double stint on the rubber. Merrick Kulak and the Esther Racing Team, 56 seconds in the box. That means one of two things. That either means a full stop and he only took a couple of tires, or it means they short filled and they took four. So that's going to be the thing that's really interesting watching the Nesta racing car. Very possible he might be on a slightly light fuel load with four new sets of tires. Excuse me, four new tires. And that is why that white Esther racing machine is going as quick as it is. Certainly is. He's now onto the back there of Centauri Kekkonen. Heading in towards turn number one once again. So Esther Racing, 10th place. They're down four positions at the moment in this race. But, of course, that's partly due to the strategy that they've taken at that first pit stop here today in this event. Uh, the battle between uh, Colson Racing Black and Hoysvall Co. Motorsport has just split up a bit in this last sort of 10 minutes or so. So that's a third and fourth place for them. Odox Motorsport, Jesus Cecilia in fifth place. Kind of on his own a little bit there. Uh, good four seconds in front and three seconds behind of the next cars and Van Devel Sim Racing Blue in sixth place Robin Esterson doing well in that Van Devel car up six places and if we are up six places is the leader of this group of cars then I'm looking at and that's TTL Esports Joshua Rogers up to seventh place so it's a good recovery drive after not the best qualifying then getting caught in that chamozzle at the start there and uh, really showing getting the chance to show his pace now he's got a bit of clear track ahead of him Connery and he can now real show what he can do here today yeah exactly and uh well you know someone that does have clear race is that prt red car at the front of the field they've just been managing the gap at the front here it's still 2.7 seconds you have to remember it was about four seconds when they came out of uh, the pits on that first stint so rasmussen has caught up a little bit here but i think what maximilian Beneke for prt red is doing he's just managing the gap right now he doesn't need to go 100 percent out uh, running quality laps all the time he's just managing his own race managing uh, his own fuel numbers as well 
well. So uh, that is the sort of situation at the front. But the thing is, all eyes are kind of towards this battle for P number seven downwards. They're quite a chain of cars. Here comes the Esther Racing Team, though. Marion Cholak down the inside at Sunset Bend over Vendor Sim Racing White. Does he manage to complete the move? Does Kekkenen manage to get the cut back off the exit of the corner? He tries to do that. They'll have to go side by side across the start finish, Paul. He certainly does. And he's got the position. He's kept it stuck there up into ninth place. But Sentara Kekkenen looking keen. He wants to get by. But I tell you what, those, uh, we think at least two tyres, if not four tyres, of the cars. Really, you know, the, the, you know, it's really showing the difference between taking some tyres and none at all, Randy. And it's showing in his lap times here today that uh, Esther Racing Team able to uh, to move up and uh, able to get himself back towards where he came into the pits. Marin's been one of the best cars all day for sure. I think that, I mean, they didn't really get a great qualifying time. That Esther racing car, uh, well, I mean, they rolled off six. It wasn't terrible, but I think with the track position, they just have struggled to work their way forward. But they've been, I think, roughly on pace with your race leaders for the most part of this one. So I think that they're going to continue to work their way forward and moving towards that last and final stop, which I think that given the amount of time we've had since the first in, it's already been 35 minutes, by the way, since the pit stops, hard to believe. Um, think that they're likely on a full tank uh, and just or excuse me, I think they're likely on a full tank and took a tire or two um, as opposed to a short fill and taking four but Marin has been flying all day today well it's uh, certainly uh, showing well, Joshua Rogers still under pressure from uh, Jack Sedgwick but it's pretty close between the two of them and uh, Sinteri Kekkonen and Wani Lopez they'll be working together they're pretty close together themselves but they are teammates so you would imagine that they're going to be uh, working together your lead guys up Maximilian Bineke 1 minute 58.9 Frederick Rasmussen that last lap 1 minute 59.1 so another tenth and a half maybe two tenths of a second gained between them and uh, well I saw on the last lap, actually, that uh, VRS Quanda Sim spot Mitchell de Jong was the fastest car on track. So it shows that they do have some pace in that car. It's just that Connery, the down in, in 12th place, once again, set the the best lap of uh, of that last, uh, the best time of that last lap uh, of all the competitors. So Mitchell de Jong mm. has jumped into that car on this stint, taken over from Matt Backham. They took a fuel, full stint, a fuel, fuel and tyres one and that's just showing new tires is that uh, really gained them a little bit of time in the stint yeah pressure tires on that uh, number eight vrs car and the simsport car and uh, they are one of the only cars in the field that did take that uh uh, that full uh, stint, shall we say, because we don't know what the situation is with the Esther Racing Team and the amount of tyres they, they took, but 56 second stop is uh, uh, quite a weird stop time for these GT cars, so we'll have to see what happens there, but the vast majority of everyone in the top 15 have gone on to this uh, double stint strategy. Certainly have. Uh, we're uh, counting down the time towards the next pit stops. We'll imagine that'll be happening in the next 20, 25 minutes or so. Certainly the ones that stopped on the on the hour will be about 22 minutes away. The ones that went a lot longer, a little bit further on, 25 minutes or so before their pit stops. And this is where, Randy, we're going to see the driver changes. This is, or well, the majority of the field changing drivers, should I say. And it's the performance of that driver getting into the car that's really going to be key to some of these guys, uh, these ones. In fact, what we're going to do is we're just going to take a quick fan immersion here. Well, Mitchell de Jong in that number eight VRS quite a sim spot car as he heads into Sunset Bend. And let's take a lap on board with him.
They are the Race Bot TV fan immersion lap with the fastest man on track at the moment, Mitchell Tiong in that VRS Coandra Simspot car, the number eight car, and is uh, big gaining on these two in front, the uh, two Van Devil Sim Racing cars uh, for 10th and 11th place. Mitchell Tiong currently 12th place as we've been seeing and Joshua Rogers is coming under uh, a bit of uh, pressure as well from the uh, Inex Racing Red Car and uh, he certainly is doing a good job though of holding on to that position here and uh, Randy really TTL they um, they've been looking good in this race pace compared to their uh, compared to the qualifying pace but uh, there's going to be a little bit of pressure coming from behind because Marin Cholak is catching up to this too now. Yeah, that's going to be the big thing here. Luckily, I think for these guys, it's happening and once they get nearer and nearer toward the end of this stint. So as, uh, they might get a little bit of pressure, but they're not going to have to worry too much about it. But at the same time, they are still reeling in like the Rob Nesterson and some other cars that are forward up the road like Hasty Cecilia. So very, very good pace coming from this Audi through the second stint. And I think Josh Rogers... Considering they're qualifying, rolling off 13th in this one, looking at very, very good uh, in the race trim. That said, still a handful of cars that we would suspect are going to be skipping tires through the second stint. As TTL likely even doing the double. I don't see anyone doing the triple just looking at the lap time. I just don't think it's going to be uh, quite quick enough. Yeah, it doesn't look an effective strategy. That's uh, for sure as they're heading into Sunset Bend once again. And uh, really... This is it. We're looking towards this, this final uh, pit stop and the strategy call that will be coming here. You're going to see the second drivers jumping in, Connery. And uh, what are we expecting? Because really, Joshua, he's doing all the pushing here. And if we go by what happened at Bathurst last, last time out, we could see maybe... OK, I don't think it's going to be quite the two seconds a lap that it was at Bathurst, but the difference in pace between him and his teammate really could affect them for a, for a good result in this race. Yeah, it goes back to what uh, Randy said at the start of this broadcast. The uh, the proportion of time that Joshua Rogers is in that car is reduced for this what, for this race. He's going to have, what, two-thirds of the race behind the wheel, uh, whereas he had five-sixths of the race uh, behind the wheel in Bathurst. And as we all know, uh, five-sixths is much more than three-quarters. Believe me, that is some quick maths right there. But uh, in terms of the rest of the teams, uh, you know, you've got FA Racing G2 there. They've got a couple of options to put in the car you've got Sebastian Job and Isaac Price who are on standby pretty much but only one of those drivers are going to make an appearance before the end of this race and if you're racing team red uh, you've got potentially uh, Patrick Pischler getting behind the wheel maybe uh, there but uh, let's just see what happens in terms of that one but uh, yeah for these teams with one really strong driver and the rest not so good uh, these short races are going to be pretty rough maths you can count on it as uh, we're heading in towards the latter stages of this race here today. And uh, Mitchell de Jong has now got within about a second of those two Vanderbilt cars. So uh, we're starting to see these battles come together once again as the uh, strategy all pays off here. And uh, I tell you what, those fresher tyres, they're really coming into effect now. This is where it's really standing out that just lap upon lap, Mitchell de Jong is just faster than everybody else. And he's lapping Randy with so much consistency as well. We've seen this from Mitchell in the past. Mitchell, he's just had an extraordinarily se extraordinary season in the rally cross cars for Dirt Night. And Mitchell is, I honestly think, when he gets into a rhythm, the most consistent driver in the sim. We saw this at Spa last year after they did a, a triple stint. He was just consistently in a couple hundred. For those who don't know what we're talking about, last handful of laps, 58, 6, 9, 3, 58, 6, 3, 8, 58, 6, 9, 8, 58, 63. He just did a 707, and he needs to make short work of these Vendaval cars. He's going to look up the inside here on Juan Lopez. I don't think Juan's really going to fight with him here. The he understands that Mitchell's on new tires, and it's going to be the discretion is going to be the better part of Valor. And indeed, Juan gets out of the way, but this car, VRS car needs to completely dice through this traffic because by my current delta right now, if Mitchell can maintain his current pace, 
by the time we get to the end of the next round of pit stops, he's going to be about four seconds off your race leaders. Considering the fact that Mac Backham, with about 10 to 12 seconds off your race lead, once the, uh, the last round of pit stops started, that shows the pace that this Coanna Sin Sport car has carried with the new tires on board. Certainly has, but the, the thing that they're going to have, the disadvantage that they're going to have is you would imagine they're not going to take any tires at the second stop, whereas everybody else is doing a full stop. That, I'm taking that into account. That's, yeah. ta that's taking that into account. Yeah, so it's going to be an interesting way, a different that sort of counter strategy, see how that pans out for them. And um, in towards the Ullman straight once again on the exit of Le Mans, and uh, De Jong just carries that speed through the corner down the Ullman straight. He's going to just pop his nose out. And I tell you what, Vanderbilt, they'll be looking at him going, he's on a different strategy. There's no point fighting too much with him. Do our own thing here, Connery, because really, if you start fighting with them, you just lose so much time with the people that you are going to be battling with. Yeah, but you will. And uh, just despite in the background that Juan Lopez, uh, Vanderbilt's in racing yellow, pushed way, way wise coming through Sunset Bend. And uh, thankfully for him, uh, he didn't lose all that much time by doing that, but uh, a little bit of a mistake there uh, from Juan Lopez. And, uh, you know, does he fight with his teammate that much, uh, you know, in the coming laps? We haven't really seen it, but uh, uh, they could be getting very, very close very, very soon. And will there be any sort of team orders to say which driver is faster than the other one? As your leaders have had a little bit of um, a time caught up between them, but of course there is traffic involved in that one, and traffic comes into play. Now, around this track, Randy, it's not as bad as Bathurst, because at Bathurst, you really couldn't make any moves on lap traffic up over the top of the mountain. Here, you have got more space, the track's wider, you've also got not got walls right next to each other, as in fact Justin Brunner has made a position on Jared Phil Cell, and... Um, you, know, you can make it count with your lap traffic. You can make those moves. So it shouldn't really affect quite as much as Freddie Rasmussen wasn't happy with the car in 38th place. That's the Thrustmaster Mavano yellow car there, Randy. Yeah, I mean, Sebring, there's a couple places where it's really single file and you can't really make moves, but for the most part, you can sort of make moves on a lot of points on this racetrack compared to the Bathurst. You're absolutely right. Bathurst, you only, only have, you know, from about turn two, the entrance of the cutting more realistically, until you get down to Forest Elbow, you are single file, and that's about a third closer to half of the lap, really. Here at Sebring, turn one is the passing zone, turn three, you have the hairpin at turn seven, you have Cunningham, Tower you can slot down the inside. We saw a move at Bishop, which is relatively uncommon. Uh, also saw Max attempt to move at Le Mans on Freddie in the opening couple laps. Of course, the last corner as well. So for getting as, uh, as far as getting through traffic is concerned, a lot more options here at Sebring than you have at Bathurst. But then again, at Bathurst, you also have much more time spent on the straights, a lot more time being able to work the slipstream. And I tell you what, Mitchell De Jong has got even quicker now, 58.5, so he's really getting on it here. But uh, that battle car's quickest lap of the race. Yeah, it is. It's their pistol best. But uh, looking ahead, Marin Cholak is all over the back of Jack Sedgwick here. Uh, you've also got Joshua Rogers pretty close to Robin Esterson as well. So we've got battles ongoing here today. And uh, these guys... All of a sudden, the stat is getting involved in things, and Mitchell De Jong's getting closer and closer to them. And uh, Cholak will be wanting to make that move sooner because he has potentially two fresher tyres than the car in front of Jack Sedgwick. Coming in towards Cunningham once again, out onto the brakes. That battle for yeah, eighth and ninth place, and uh, certainly going through here towards the tower bend once again and connery will look at this battle you look at the the battle in front of the world between the uh, rogers and esterson it's really good to see all these uh, these close battles on track even as we're coming up towards the uh, two hour mark in this race yep exactly coming up to around about two thirds of this event done and there's still battles going on out there on track even though there are not really any side by sides just yet on the previous lap, Esther Racing Team and Cindy Cuba Enex Racing Red, they did 
go briefly side by side from 10 10 to 10 number 13 but Mar uh, Marion Kosholak was not able to complete the pass so he's gonna have to have a second attempt here drags the brakes up close coming through sunset bend looking to get that run off the corner he's gotta be careful not to go wide or he goes onto the grass and I've seen many many a car hit those tire barriers on the outside, on the outside before yeah, it's uh, so easy to do that uh, as you're heading out of uh, Sunset Bend and uh, heading in towards turn number one once again. The Esther Racing Team, Aaron Sherlock, doing a good job once again. Behind the wheel of the car. In towards turn number five once again. Big Bend coming up and here comes Mitchell De Jong. From behind now, that VRS Quantum Sim Spot car. Time to put the pressure on here, and uh, certainly it's going to be uh, a good battle between these three now, Randy, because uh, you've got the two cars that are quicker that are behind Jack Sedgwick, who maybe is holding them up a little bit here. Yeah, there is a little bit, but as they work themselves forward, where is Mitchell going to be able to make this stick? Like I said, he needs to make short work of this because he is very, very tight on the delta to being very, very close to your race leaders once this uh, final pit stop sequence is out. Assuming Mitchell skips tires and your race leaders take them because I don't think the triple stint is going to work. He's now tucked under the rear wing of the Esta Racing Team car at Marin Kolak. Heading now through tower and on the run down towards Bishop. Not going to be able to quite get there just yet. This is going to be costing Mitchell a lot of time. Does he slot at the inside here through uh, through this sequence before Lamont? No, he doesn't. They're going to have to wait. They're going to have to be patient. You can uh, see the difference in pace here. Going down the straight now. The Ullman straight here. Certainly is going to be a tough one for them to try and make the move. Chirlak is just showing his nose a little bit here. Not able to get past and here comes De Jong. Down the inside, Chirlak ran wide and that is the position changed for VRS Conde Simsport. Mitchell De Jong is up now up to ninth place and Jack Sedgwick is his next target here, Connery. Yeah, I was about to say that Marin Sholak perhaps should have actually, uh, for that Esther Racing team, just uh, let Vera Espedit Sensor well buy a little bit easier and then just slot in directly behind them because then that, that gives the potential to use Mitchell De Jong and Quandon Simsport as a pick to try and get past uh, Enex uh, and a couple of the other cars ahead, try and make the gap for them. Well, here we go then. Through Big Ben, the go. De Jong looking ahead. We've also got Rogers close by with Esterson. And here's a Cecilia involved in that battle as well. So all of a sudden you've got some big gaggles of cars together as they're going through. And uh, here goes Mitchell De Jong. He's looking busy. He's wanting to try and get that move done on Cedric in towards Cunningham once again. Through Collier. And, oh, a little twitch there, a little bit more twitches there from Sedgwick. Through the right-hander at Tower, heading towards Bishop, and then Lamont. De Jong certainly showing good pace here. He's pulled out a big gap behind him because uh, Cholak can't keep up with him. Through Lamont he goes now, and onto the Ullman straight once again. You would imagine that he's going to get the run here. Pressure tyres. And uh, as we're heading down the Ullman straight once again, De Jong trying his hard. N not quite going to be working there for him, but De Jong, this is now, Connery, where we're going to be looking forward for strategy. Oh, Cedric loses the back end a little bit there on the exit of Sunset Bend. Down towards turn number one goes uh, De Jong. Through he goes at the turn number one. Nice move there from De Jong and able to take the place up into eighth place. Taking advantage of Cedric just getting a little bit loose there, Connery. But I was going to mention, we've got these pit stops are going to come up in about five minutes time now. And this is where we're really going to see how the, the, the final part of this race will pan out now. Yeah, exactly. And I've seen a couple of these drivers that are actually on 
the on the double stint strategy coming towards the end of the stint now those tires aren't really surviving as actually TTL Esports battling with Venval Sim Racing Blue here in fact they've managed to get themselves by and what can Essendon do in reply heading down towards Cunningham Corner now turn number 10 does he go for the dive no he just stays behind so that's TTL Esports up one more position up into P6 yep certainly good move from Rogers sixth place for him Jesus Cecilia is his next target He's looking forward, not backwards, in towards the tower. Once again, they've got a little bit of lap traffic ahead of them as well. And it's one of the Evolution Racing Team cars, the number 30 car that looks, um, well, it looks like it's not going back onto the, uh, the, the forecourt, that's for sure. It's uh, not going to be up for sale as that car is a bit used. Well, careful owner never raced or rallied, but through the right hander then onto the Ullman Straight. Joshua Rogers looking for that position. He's wanting that fifth place here from Odox. Needs as many points for the championship as possible for that TTL Esports car into Sunset Bend once again. Jesus Cecilia holding position here. An hour and three minutes remaining in this race. One more pit stop to come from everybody here. Across the line they go, looking at the lap times then, and uh, well, De Jong faster once again, he's catching up to this gaggle of three cars, but he has got a bit of lap traffic ahead of them, so uh, through these corners he's going to be uh, struggling, he's got to time it right. There's a Cecilia taking a little bit of a different line through five into Big Bend. And he's going to be trying to make that move stick. Randy, looking at that uh, strategy, you've been keeping abreast of it. You've been doing calculations. It's going to be uh, it's going to be pretty close here for uh, De Jong and VRS Quanda Sim Sport as to whether they get involved in that lead battle here. The traffic has really hurt him. The traffic has really hampered his pace. You see Mitchell flashing lights at these lap cars and. It's going to be Jacob Brzezinski in the Evolution Racing Team number 30 that he has to get through. That one doesn't cost him any time. But next in line is going to be Robin Esterson, who scored position because of that. That Vendelval car may be unlikely to play quite as nicely. Then you have Josh Rogers and Hasty Cecilia. For those keeping in a, a track of where that Coanda Sim Sport car was on track before the pit stop, well, they were in the eighth position. So they've gotten back to the position they were in at that last run. And now they're hounding the back of Vendelval, and they have TTL and Odox out in front of them. They're reeling really oh, in as well. Then speaking of TTL, a little bit of rubbing there through the inside into Le Mans, and all of a sudden, Odox have slowed down Vendelval, and here comes Coanda onto the grass, goes VRS Coanda with uh, Mitchell de Jong. I know he does his uh, rally cross, but that's taken a little bit extreme in the GT3 cars. But uh, it was an opportunist move from Joshua Rogers on Hazer Cecilia, and it held up the cars behind him. And now he's going to try and just pull out through the final corner. And De Jong now, he's got his set sight on that car in front of him. And that car in front now, Connery, is Robin Esterson, and he's going to... Well, Esterson's having a look at Hazel Cecilia. It's turn number one. Through they go. Little oh. bit of contact. Front to rear contact. And, well, De Jong says, oh, thank you. That's the easiest move I've made all day. Here comes Cedric now on Hazel Cecilia as well. Cecilia, terrible, terrible few turns. And he's lost himself. What's that? Four positions here in this one, Connery. Yeah, absolutely fantastic racing in the bottom end of your top 10 here. And it still just may not be over. Mitchell de Jong still very close to the back of the 42 of Robin Essenson. Of course, on those fresher tyres as well. Look at how much deeper on the brakes he can go down in towards the hairpin without locking up. And now Viras kind of says, well, can they get yet one more position, get themselves in towards P number seven? It's looking fairly likely unless Edison can put up a brick wall of a defence. But here comes Mitchell de Jong down the inside and he'll get that position completely only just. In fact, Edison will battle back, but I think it's in vain. Yeah, he's on the outside line in towards Tower and he has to uh, submit to that one. Loses the position then to uh, De Jong. So De Jong up now to sixth place here. This has been an incredible run for him. Of course, they did take a full service at that pit stop and we expect him to just take fuel in this next pit stop, which of course is uh, coming up very shortly. And speaking of the pits, here comes Frederick Rasmussen right on cue and on target, Randy. 
on the hour to make his pit stop, final pit stop of the day, and it's going to be a change of driver as well. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see who gets behind the wheel of that car and if they'll have the pace that Frederick Rasmussen has had. They now come down pit road, and Freddie, who's going to be replacing you, bud? I don't think he's technically even gotten out of the car yet. He's going to need to. So, meanwhile, out in front, also as expected, Max Benecke. He's going the extra long stint that we saw last time. Uh, Sebastian Job is getting into the uh, into the uh, car now for FA Racing G2. As uh, well, it's a pit party once again. Everybody who was going for the hour would say, uh, get into the pit, get your strategy uh, and your fuel stops done and your tyres. And uh, Job still patiently waiting. He's going to get a, uh, a tyre stop done on this one as well you would imagine as uh, well your leader Paneke staying out there for the time being we saw him go a lot longer last time you would imagine that he's going to go uh, potentially another lap job waiting patiently he's going to get the uh, the lollipop drop go up and away he goes then pit stop time one minute nine seconds out of pit road he goes now. So that's the sort of target time we're looking at for Beneke with his pit stop. But crucially for Job, he's coming out in completely clear traffic. And that's going to be crucial for him here, uh, Connery, as we look towards Beneke to see whether he comes onto pit road now. Yeah, that is a huge amount of clear air for FA Racing G2. That is exactly what they wanted to get this out there. But the thing is, in comes Maximilian Beneke now, gets the car stopped for the yellow cones. Your racing team red, your race leaders down on towards the lane. So are a couple of cars behind as well. SRB Racing deciding to head their way down towards the lane. But here we go. This is going to be the important pit stop, pit stop, the crucial pit stop in this event. And we go then, Beneke from your race lead onto pit road. He stops on his marks. It's going to be a change of driver then for that pure racing team red car. And Patrick Pichler getting in. We saw how quick he can be in that car. And uh, he's going to uh, wait patiently, wait for that uh, that fuel and tyres to be done. Mitchell Dion coming onto pit road as well. So they're going to make their pit stop now. And they're going to get that done. Uh, Inex Racing, Jack Cedric has stayed out for another lap. So he's technically he's, uh, out in the lead at the moment. Just while this pit stop phase is going through. And uh, De Jong staying in that car for VRS Quanta Sim Sport. That's going to be see. We're going to see where they're going to come out in comparison to Pure Racing Team Red. That's going to be a crucial one here. A couple more teams have stayed out. Pure Racing Team Black. We saw them do that last time. Also, Evolution Racing Team in the 29 car. Simon Maria Matsena uh, is staying out for another lap on this stint. Still waiting here. Where Sebastian Job? That's the question. He's uh, coming around Sunset Bend now. Patrick Pichler out of pit road. One minute, eight seconds for his pit stop. He's out of pit road as well. And he's going to come out in front. It's not the biggest of gaps, though. And uh, FA Racing G2, there was about two, two and a half seconds between them going into the pit stop phase. As uh, timing sorts itself out. We're going to be looking at around about the same times there, Randy. And and Mitchell cycles in the third. Yeah. That's, uh, that's crucial for him. 40 second pit stop for him. Of course, he didn't take tyres in that one. And, uh, well, you look at that gap now. Got about two and a half seconds between uh, Pichler and Job. But De Jong, he's not that far behind either. He's, uh, he's going to be pushing on for this one. And uh, you could potentially see him get involved towards the end. Although, fresher tyres on those two cars in front, Randy, it's maybe going to kind of count against him, but it'd still be a good position from him. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how Mitchell's able to work this. I don't think he's going to be in it for the win here. I think if he had been a little bit closer, maybe working the slipstream, he may have been able to, to really help it. But some of that traffic towards the end of the stint really, really hurt him and cost him, I think, about three or four seconds out there on the racetrack, just given the pace that he was running. But regardless, he comes out in a very, very good position. And I think that Vera's Quinn is his port number eight car. I think they'll likely be able to hold on to this third place. I'm not sure if we had too many people come out relative to them still waiting on the timing to pretty much update i think Inex is currently the fourth place runner uh but mitchell's pretty much had them outpaced even on uh, similar tires but we need to see what this vrs quinn of sport audi can do uh, on this final run 
And well, you've got the final three cars that didn't come onto pit road on that last lap. They're on pit road now, so they're making their final pit stop of the race. So we'll uh, just have to be patient, wait for the uh, timing screen to catch up. By the way, you can keep up with timing and scoring on racebot.tv forward slash timing. Keep up with the event all the way through to the end of this one. And it's going to be an enthralling end to this one. Across the line, they go them. Just two seconds between Job and Pichla. And I tell you what, Job, he's got the bit between his teeth. He's really pushing. He wants that lead. He wants the win in this one. And uh, certainly he's uh, he's given a good go. Actually, one car still to pit. Pure Racing Team Black. We saw them go longer on their last stint. They're going to go longer on this one. So this is technically the battle for the lead here between Pure Racing Team Red, Sebastian uh, Job in the FA Racing G2 car. But Connery, hey, it's, it's all on. It's, it's game on here for these guys. And uh, they're really pushing and really going to go to the end here. Yeah, gap between your two uh, eventual race leaders here and, uh, until PRT Black comes down on towards the lane. The gap between PRT Red and FA Racing G2 down below a second now, getting more towards uh, 1.9 seconds. So Sebastian Job, he knows how urgent, he knows how important that this final stint is. He, he sees the carrot on the stick. Yeah, and don't forget, he has got a race spot logo on the front of his car as Patrick Pichler, and we all know that uh, means that you get about uh, two tenths of a second a lap faster, Randy, and it's shown time and again that that seems to work, and so far today it's working, but I tell you what, he's coming under pressure from Job behind. Well, that seems pretty bogus to me, because the race spot logo never did me any good. <laughs> you need to try harder. Uh, <laughs> but, but he is coming under pressure More from Job. logos. Um, Job is really put, pile on the pressure. He seems to have the uh, the edge over them. But of course, we saw that in that in the opening stint of each uh, of those first two stints that that uh, FA Racing G2 car just had that little bit of an edge for the first 20 minutes of a stint. Yeah, and that's really what we're going to be watching here. And if you're Sebastian Job, you need to take that into account. And you need to put down some of the best laps that you've done all week. Still waiting on that Pure Racing Team black car, by the way. Sebastian Schmallenbach doing a very, very good uh, good run here to keep the car out as long as he had. Last time by, Seb was two-tenths of a lap quicker than, well, two-tenths quicker than that number 72 machine. So the time is coming down. Uh, between these two. So Seb needs to get there and I honestly think he needs to start harassing that number 72 car as hard as he can to try to really make those tires work. Keeping also an eye on the other drivers around, uh, that have come out recently. Mitchell De Jong, 59-4 for him last time through versus a 58-7 basically for your race leaders, 58-9 for Pischlers. So that kind of shows the difference in pace from the old tires. So Mitchell is not going to chase those cars down in front for sure. Look who's currently in fifth place, uh, Connery. In X Racing Blue, Justin Brunner, it was a short pit stop for them this last time. They obviously have done that counter strategy as well as uh, Mitchell De Jong in that VRS Quanda Sim Spot car. But uh, they're now coming under pressure from Pachelis Georges in that uh, course in Racing Black car. And I tell you what, Justin Brunner's going to have a heck of a time keeping him behind on fresher tyres as well. Yeah, exactly. And to add to uh, Unix's issues, the car that's uh, down the road from them is about 13.5 seconds. Yeah, certainly uh, they're going to be struggling here. And, uh, well, we're looking at the standings as a fact. Pure Racing Team Black comes onto pit road. So they were in the lead, but they're making their final pit stop. So we'll, uh, we'll call it as we see it here at the moment. It's Pure Racing Team Red then in second place at the moment, FA Racing G2 in third, VRS Quantum Sim Spot fourth, with Simicube, Inex Racing Blue in fifth, Colson Racing Black sixth, Pure Racing Team Blue in seventh, and Heusevelt Court Mudspot round out your top eight in this event. We're going to be stepping aside for just a few moments, but uh, stay with us because it's going to be an enthralling end to this virtual racing school GT World Championship Series here on iRacing Live and Racebot TV.
FA Racing G2 with Sebastian Job in second place and Job has been absolutely pumping in the times here he's on the tail of that pure racing team red car here Connery and uh, he's certainly got the bit between his teeth he wants that first place and it looks like at the moment with his body language that he's going to stop at nothing to get it yeah, absolutely. Sebastian Job has been absolutely on fire since he got himself behind the wheel. And remember, that was only, what, about seven and a half laps ago. And he's brought that gap down from around about two seconds all the way down to three tenths of a second now. So this is the huge opportunity that FA Racing G2 needed to perhaps try to get their first race win in the VRS GT World Championship. So looking through Bishop once again. And we saw how this is basically how close they were running, but the opposite way around in that first stint of the race uh, for the first half hour or so before uh, we saw Beneke make the move and Rasmussen, uh, audacious move from him. But uh, now it's between Job and Pichla. Pichla's no slouch, that's for sure, but Sebastian Job just seemed to uh, really be doing well. By the way, third place, hats off to them with work and the strategy. Mitchell De Jong in that VRS Quanda Simspot car, up 11 positions in this one. And it's certainly been well worked here, Randy, because you've been mentioning that they were looking at, uh, they were looking at um, making those uh, moves through, but talking about their strategy, that opposite strategy compared to the others, they've made it work here today of uh, VRS Quanda Simspot. That they've had, they've done a very good job of it considering where they started around 10th and had some interesting points around them to come off pit road third. They've had a very, very good race and a lot of teams need to kind of look at that and analyze that. I think a lot of people blindly went for the double stint when really I don't think it was the preferred strategy today. As uh, Job looking to the right, he's trying to get in the mirrors of P. Schlapp in that pure racing team red car. As they go out of the hairpin once again, heading through Fangio. And uh, really, these two, they've been uh, battling away. It's been the battle of these two teams all the way through this race. The rest of them just not quite able to keep up with the, um, with the rest of them. By the way, Vendevil Sim Racing White making the move on their teammates for 12th place. So that's a change position there. Uh, further down your order. Uh, pure racing team black done a superb job with the strategy calls with the longer stints uh, able to get up ahead out to sixth place connery and uh, are up ahead of hoisted vault co motorsports who will have just been having it's not been working out for them again in this race no it really hasn't and uh <coughs> sorry excuse me but uh maybe it's something to do with uh, their pick of the mercedes here maybe the mercedes is not quite uh well suited to their racing circuit but uh bringing the session back to the car ahead of them though pure racing team uh they have had their issues so far this race even though they've still gained what 25 positions they still had that contact with core and uh well special comments uh, will vincent you know what, what what have you been taking away from this and what have you noticed out there i just looked at the fact that in p number three that like mitchell de jong um he's now got himself the opportunity to solidify that podium position one thing i wanted to do very quickly because we are on a big weekend here on Racebook tv and on iRacing live we've got ourselves a neo endurance series starting very very soon in fact in half an hour here on Racebook TV and on iRacing Live. We've got Jake Sperry here. He will be doing commentary for the first four hours and the last four hours. And Jake is going to be fun. Neo. It is going to be fun. It's Neo. It's, it's the big drama and excitement. It's the biggest league in endurance sim racing on iRacing's platform. It is absolutely fantastic to see throughout the season how the battles go on. And arguably, you could say those doing VRS GT at the moment, they've got to pull most of them double duty this mm -hmm. afternoon into tomorrow. And that's a massive difficulty that they are having to negotiate in their planning nightmare. And in terms of that, because we talked about it at the start of the broadcast, we've glossed over it a little bit. How hard do you think it's going to be for some of these drivers to do double duty? doing this at the VRS GT World Endurance Championship um, and then, sorry, so the VRS GT Championship on iRacing and then also the Neo Endurance Series final race at Le Mans because it's two very different racetracks. 
it is two very different racetracks. I think that it's going to take a lot of time to develop one into the other, and that's why I think you're going to see drivers um, come into maybe the mid hours to late hours, those who have been putting in their stints here, like Sir Patrick Pichler, for example, uh, the likes of maybe even Maximilian Beneke as well. But crucially about that, it's about what sort of driver you have, because it's very easy to say that a certain race will go one way, a certain race will go another. Uh, but you have to be able to get up to speed very quickly and adapt from track to track. Some drivers have it, some drivers don't, but iRacing is the perfect platform to train that sort of skill. We've still got the battle going on between Pure Racing Team and FA G2 Logitech G as well, Paul. The gap is very, very small here today. We're going to have a close battle also tomorrow in the final round of the new Endurance Series. It's going to be uh, great to uh, be involved. I've been stewarding on the, on the series, and I'm also going to be broadcasting in the early hours of the morning, which uh, I really did get the short straw Sorry. on that one. But, uh, but certainly it's get going to be... Uh, it's going to be... Uh, going to be an interesting race is that one 24 hours around the mall you know it sounds easy but uh, i'll tell you what it's certainly not easy to keep that concentration up around that track it is a, a monster of a track and it's a challenging track at that as well indeed so as we're having a look then at pure racing team red versus fa g2 logitech g battle going on paul let's hand it back over to you 37 minutes and a half to go and well fa racing won to get that race victory they came to second last time by at bathurst they want that race victory here at sebring Thank you very much, Will. So, yes, uh, they are pretty close by with that Pure Racing Team red car. And uh, my question to you, Randy, right now is, do you try and make that move as soon as possible or do you be a bit patient and wait for the move a little bit later on? No, you need to get this move done right here, right now, I think, if you're Sebastian Job. That Pure Racing Team car, we've seen all day, all the Pure Racing Team cars, they get quicker over the run. The, the uh, FA Racing G2 Logitech G car has had the pace early on in the stint. We're sort of leaving the quote-unquote early part of the stint. I guess you could maybe argue, but we're still at the point where I think if you're Seb Job, you need to completely attack Patrick Pitchler right here, right now, and I think you need to make the move at the earliest possible convenience. No point in overthinking this one. Just get a run, slot it down the inside, throw it deep onto the brakes, even do a little bit of a quote-unquote dive bomb maybe even perhaps, and force that pure racing team car to drive out of his mind to try to get his way back around you. As they go through Big Ben, they've got traffic ahead of them here. And uh, heading down towards the hairpin, maybe uh, Job can use that traffic to his advantage and uh, try and get... That car in front held up and make the moves and make it stick as uh, through the go through the hairpin. The lights are flashing. Patrick Pichler, he's desperate. He wants to get by that BMW, that lap traffic. And do you know what? Great driving from that BMW to get out the way of these two. Uh, Cesar Frona and SRB Racing, good work. Uh, they didn't have to make that move, of course, because in endurance racing, the blue flags, they're just there at discretion, Ray. They're just there to let you know that there are faster cars coming up behind. And Connery, you know, that, that's more of a gentlemanly thing to do uh, with that move to, to get out the way of these two battling for the lead. Yeah, absolutely. It's not a requirement at all. As you, uh, as exa you quite rightly pointed out, their only advisory are the blue flags in the iRacing Sporting Code. But it's still the responsibility of the passing driver to facilitate a yes, very safe pass. Uh, so that is the state of things in terms of the ruling here. But FA Racing G2 still on the hunt here, still stalking his prey in terms of Pure Racing Team Red in towards Sunset Bend now. And he's still not just there yet. He's getting close, but not close enough to be able to make a dive anywhere on circuit right now. And I think Sebastian Job is just biding his time a little bit. He has 34 minutes to play with. As uh, the clock is ticking down here, Job just keeps on showing his nose there he wants to get that move done by the way uh pure racing team black a few technical problems for them they've dropped down the order so uh, they've just come out of the pits i believe so they're uh, lapped down 
here in this one but these two battling at the front this is a battle we've been wanting to see here between these two teams and they've uh, certainly been giving it a good go and uh, there is battling further down as well Leicester Racing are in eighth place and uh, well ninth place for Inex Racing Red those two have been battling away as well. The battle for 10th place has been ongoing as well. TTL Esports, by the way, after their driver change, down to 17th here, Connery. So uh, really a bit of a, a nightmare for TTL in this event. They've dropped down four positions from where they started in this one. And uh, Richard Hampstead just... Uh, Really, he's got to try and get the, make the best of it and try and get the best result for them today in this event. Yeah, these three-hour races are going to be super, super tough on TTL Esports uh, because you can't keep Joshua Rogers in there for a higher proportion of the laps. So it's going to be just getting that car to the end now is what Richard Hampstead just has to focus on. Try not to lose too many positions. Uh, just keep on the great stuff, though, is the primary objective for TTL Esports. They will lose the championship lead, uh, no doubts at all, uh, at the end of this race. But who will be top or will they be tied? Pure Racing Team F Racing G2 is still close. It is close here. Job is he's just patiently waiting here. And uh, I think it's basically a case of just biding his time at the moment. He doesn't need to make that move straight away. But, as we've been seeing throughout this race, that that uh, pure racing team car just seems to come to its own in the second part of this uh, stint, of each stint here today in this event. And uh, certainly, going through turn number one now, lap times comparison, pure racing team, Patrick Paisler was just slightly faster on that last lap by about uh, 500 of a second on that last lap. Mitchell de Jong, by the way, still third place. That VRS Quanda Sim Spot car is on all the tyres, so he's struggling to keep up with the pace of the two leaders. Uh, Simicube Inex Racing with uh, Justin Brunner in fourth place. Again, another car that did that uh, alternate strategy of doing the full pit stop and the first stop, and they've got themselves to fourth place. A really good run from them as well. Colson Racing Black, Pachelis Georges, we saw all get involved with that incident uh, at the start of this last stint, is in fifth place with Hoist Falk Comot Sports in sixth place. Pure Racing Team Yellow in 7th and Esther Racing Team in 8th place. That's the top 8 of your field at the moment. And uh, Conry, really, we've been paying attention to this battle between Job and uh, Patrick Pichler. But there are other battles going on, other, other close battles going on as well. And so Vanderbilt Sim Racing Blue looking close to Zenith High Speed, who we've not spoken about mm. all day today. I don't think we've spoken about them even in Bathurst. That's how quiet they've been. But uh, yeah, Zenith Racing Team, uh, Zenith High Speed, sorry. Uh, Carlos Diego is currently behind the wheel of that one. We had Ricardo Ferreria uh, behind the wheel of the uh, of, of the car on the first two stints there. We've got Tatsuru Hashimoto behind the wheel of the Vendor Sim Racing blue car at the moment. And Marco Akunto, this is Jim Racing uh, GTR Center Azuri, also in this battle as well. So a good three car pack just outside your top 10. Yep, great racing all the way through the field. It's been an absolutely uh, epic race. It's been uh, spectacular to watch and an intriguing one, a very sort of uh, thought out strategy wise as well. And uh, these guys now, once again, last lap, Pure Racing Team just slightly faster. Not not really enough to say that they had the overall edge of uh, FA Racing G2 on that last lap, but they have just pulled out that gap just slightly on this last lap. So they're really showing now 30 minutes remaining in this race, just half an hour in this one. And it still could be either of these two win this one, or if they both wipe each other out, Mitchell de Jong might be coming through for a, an unlikely victory in this one. So you never count against anything in this event here. And I'll uh, I'll bring Will in here as well, because these two, we, we saw how close they were in that first stint of the race and how in the swap positions. That pure racing team car just had the edge in the second, latter part of each of these stints so far today. if Will does want to speak. So one of the things that's worth noting about in terms of um, Pure Racing Team is that they have been so strong over the history of 
not only the Endurance Series, but everything that comes before that, the new Endurance Series, the GS Series, so on and so forth. They've got themselves a very fast driver behind them right now, in terms of the race lead. And this is going to be a fantastic battle for the race lead. But for Pure Racing Team Red, this is really, I think, what they wanted to be in. They are leading a motor race with less than 30 minutes to go in one of the world's biggest sim racing series. And I will say here that, Paul, I will say that, you know, Pure Racing Team, they're doing what they want to do right now. Yeah, but they're certainly... Uh basically making the mark for setting the pace at the moment because once again a couple hundreds faster than F8 Racing G2 so uh, definitely going to be close between these guys as they're going through this first part of the track. You can't really make the moves into this corner turn number 5 but carry the speed out of turn 5 through Big Bend here down towards the hairpin once again these two Close by Justin Brunner and Priscilla's Jurgis as well. Um, those two are pretty close together. In fact, Jurgis has made the move on Brunner. That's a change of position then. And uh, made that move. Uh, the Inex number 10 car is dropping down the order as well. Obviously had an issue here on this one. And... Uh, They've got a lot of damage on their car. I'll try and find out what's happened there, but it looks like it's coming through. Oh, it was into the final corner. They got the braking all wrong. The back end stepped out and Joseph Fulgren into the tyre barrier, heavily into the tyre barrier. And that Simacube Inex Racing red car has got some serious damage. And I'll be amazed if they can even finish this race here, Connery. Yeah, absolutely. They're going so, so, so slow around the racing circuit right now. Just coming out of the first sector in towards Big Bend. And, uh, well, if they're running that sort of pace, you have to argue that maybe they'd be better off retiring that car because they're a danger to everyone else on the uh, racing circuit by going that slow. In fact, they'll just bring it to a stop, I believe, pretty much just before the hairpin turn. Careful there. Oh, there we go. He's just bringing it onto the grass now. So is he going to go this speed all the way to pit lane or is he just going to take the toe? I think he's just going to take the toe. He's brought that to a stop as Josef Fulgren. And there we go. Yeah, it's the only sensible thing that he could do with that car, really. He tried, he, he was seeing if, uh, if if the car had, had the ability to be able to make it through there and uh, to make it... And uh, we've got a look at the crash here. And as I say, back end just stepped out on the brakes going into Sunset Bend. It's so easily done there because it is quite bumpy into there. And then head on into the tyre wall. And uh, that's... Uh, race done for that uh, NX team. So it's so sad to see that because one of the few Ferraris on the grid here today. And Esther racing now, the number four car, putting the pressure on pure racing team yellow. At that final corner, heading towards the uh, start finish line, across the line they go now. And uh, looking to the inside, not making the move for the time being. They're gonna hold behind, but uh, that uh, Esther Racing Team, they did a full stop compared to Pure Racing Team Yellow, who only took fuel on that last one. And uh, definitely, they're, uh, they're struggling here, uh, Pure Racing Team Yellow, Connery. The, the, those newer tyres on the Esther car is showing here. Yeah, and it's showing because of that, uh, well, half a second advantage that Esther Racing Team had gotten themselves on that last lap alone. So that theme is just going to be continuing here. You can see how much later they can go on the brakes in towards the hairpin as, hairpin as well. Uh, tire wear does obviously slightly affect uh, braking performance as well, which is why you can go a little bit deeper. But uh, the thing is, this pass is pretty much inevitable at this point, unless uh, Laubjic, which is behind the wheel of the Pure Racing Team car at the moment, can just you know set up a, uh, set up a huge wall in front. He's uh, certainly putting on a de defensive display here today, that's for sure. He's uh, doing everything that he can to try and hold on to that position as they go towards Bishop. Fast left-hander here. We have seen moves done here today. With the double apex left-hander onto the brakes. Lamar, right, left. We're on board here and uh, right again. 
onto the Ullman straight. You've got to carry that speed out that final right-hander onto the Ullman straight, using the slipstream now. And Esther going off track there, looking up to the wall on the right-hand side. And I tell you what, it's a good job that that's paved over there because that would have been a big crash if, uh, if it hadn't have been. But Esther making the move, making the position up to seventh place now in this one. Zenith High Speed, by the way, have lost a position as well to Vendervel Sim Racing Blue. Tatsuro Hashimoto making a position up into the top ten for Vendervel Sim Racing Blue. So a couple of position changes in the quick succession there, Conray. But uh, I tell you what, it was a bit of a risk. Uh, the Esther car going off onto that uh, over the white line there. Yeah, I, I'm not sure what the uh, Zola track limit situation is there with the white line. So maybe that's one that Pure Racing Team Yellow will ask, uh, ask the series to be investigated after the race. Of course, there are no in-race protests here in this series. It's all done after the event has concluded. And I think that's definitely one thing that I would protest. Well, your lead battle still half a second between the two of them. You've also got a battle between Inex Racing Blue and Host of Alco Motorsports as well. They're pretty close together. And again, it's the uh, old tyres versus the new tyres effect that's coming into uh, into play here. And uh, really, it's a pretty close battling all the way through this field. And don't forget, live timing is available. Got a race spot, .tv forward slash timing. Keep an eye on everything that's going on in this one because there are so many battles on track on uh, today here. It's been absolutely fantastic. We're looking at the uh, first place battle though. Patrick Pichler, Pure Racing Team Red versus Sebastian Job in the FA Racing G2 Logitech G car. Still less than half a second between the two of them and Connery, we were expecting a move to be done uh, earlier. Um, to get that position done for uh, Sebastian Job, but Job is sitting behind at the moment. He's pretty much the, the, they're just doing tenth for tenth between the two yeah. of them on the lap times. You can't put anything between them at all. No, you can't. And also another two drivers they can't put anything between is the Hoising Valcor Motorsports car and the Sumi QB Next Racing Blue car because Hoising Valcor Motorsports didn't manage to get themselves past uh, last time by coming in towards Sunset Bend. There's a slight bit of slide of a slide there coming through turn number three for Alexandra Voss, but he's just working on trying to pull the gap now uh, to Justin Brunner, and uh, he's done that already. He's got a couple of tenths, tenths over him, so the fresh tyres for Hoising Valcor Motorsports really, really working well for them. But back to this lead battle, Sebastian Job has been in this position for what about 15 minutes now uh, since the uh, well, you know, since he caught back up about seven laps after the uh, after the start of this stint. So what does he do in this sort of situation? He hasn't shown his hand yet. And the problem is, if you stay behind too long as well, you get you get into that metronome. You, you're following the car in front rather than running your own line. And then you end up, you, you, you're not able to make a move because you're breaking at the same point that the, the other car is breaking as well. As Job really getting up behind that rear wing now of that pure racing team red car into Sunset Bend. Round the go. And it's still pretty close between the two of them. Across the line they go. Lap times this time, 58.5. 58.5 from Pure Racing Team Red, 58.3 from Sebastian Job. He's really putting the pressure on now. I think his team boss has had a word in his ear and he said, right, this is it now. We've got to make the move and we've got to make it move now. And uh, that's what he's trying to do here. All the way behind, 20 and a half minutes remaining in this race. So not too long remaining in this one. It's a crucial time now. Maybe he needs to turn it on and uh, Connery. You would expect that his team manager would be in his ear going, right now, push, give us absolutely everything that you can. But Pure Racing Team will be saying the same for Patrick Pichlow as well. Yeah, he would definitely, definitely will be. And I know, uh, uh, well, Danny Engels, the uh, team principal for FA Racing G2, uh, he is uh, watching there in the uh, in the Twitch chat, in fact. So he is basically going to be exactly as he said in Sebastian Jobs' ear now. Just you gotta push, you gotta push, you gotta push, and try to get this race win. The race win is on the cards. You can just see it ahead of him. He only needs to pass one more car. But the thing is, that one more car is just going to defend as hard as possible because uh, this is important, absolutely important for the championship. 
we've seen pure racing team develop as will said through the different series i the first time i really saw them coming through to the fore was in the vln series that we used to show uh on our on race but tv and i racing live and uh, uh, well you know these these this team they've really sort of shown their hand now and they've really shown that they can compete here and will you know this is their time to really show that they are, have got it as Sebastian Job just looking to the inside Sunset Bend he's not going to make that move but uh, he's really putting the pressure on now the issue for Sebastian Job is he's behind PRT and PRT is one of those teams that has done so much over the years here in endurance racing and PRT they know how to defend a position at a track like this, like Sebring, as they work themselves through turn number one again. The gap is down to two turns for the second, but it doesn't really matter, Paul, because of the fact that, again, you got a PRT car ahead. And I just saw the brake, the, the brake flicker there by the driver of Patrick Beachler. And it's like, okay, I'm just going to turn to my apex, and that's exactly what he needs to do. He doesn't need to race anyone but the racetrack. As they're heading down towards the hairpin once again, Job. Oh, he's making the move. He's going to lunge down the inside, is he? It's going to be a defensive move from Pichler. Great driving from both drivers. And uh, good awareness from Patrick Pichler to note that that was going to happen. Made that defensive move, that one move, and it worked so far. But that's the first shot there, Connery. It's a shot across the bow. It's uh, Sebastian Job showing that he means business now. Yep, exactly. The race is now definitely on between these two teams. That is just the sign of things to come in the last 15 minutes of this event. And the thing is, how long can Pichler keep Sebastian Job behind him? The, the desire for Sebastian Job is there. Like I said earlier, he can see the carrot on the stick. He can see the race win ahead of him. And now he's only got 15 minutes to be able to do it. So he had one chance. How many other chances he'll get, I don't know. But he has to take them. Will was that um, was that Job showing his hand a little too uh, too soon, you know, or, or was it a case of he had to make that effort to then sort of maybe put the doubt into Patrick Pichler's mind? He had to do so. He had to make the move to try and do so. But this is not the last time as they come into Sunset Bend once again. Job is right behind, but. I would say last five minutes, if it's going to happen, it'll be about five minutes to go. He won't do it on the final lap, but Job will try with five minutes to go. As they head across the line, once again, both drivers putting in a little bit of compromised lap time, that last lap, of course, because they were fighting there into the hairpin. 58 sevens for both of them. But they're by far running faster than most of the field here today, even with them battling here today. This has been absolutely enthralling. We're coming into the last 15 minutes of the race as well. Anything could happen here. Job just getting a little bit onto the curb on the exit into Big Bend. That just compromises you a little bit. Pichler holding that inside line. is going to force Job to go to the outside, under braking, into the hairpin. This is where Job has the advantage, it seems, but he gets a little bit loose. Got onto the bumps there on the outside of the curve. And uh, that one, just a little bit of a mistake, but Job looks so much more, looks so much more confident on the brakes there, Connery. Yeah, absolutely, and he's uh, looking just vicious in general. He's uh, just wheeling that car around, trying to get 110% pace out uh, of that Audi, and uh, well, to try to pass the Audi above him. So that is the uh, one of the only differences. As Job gets the slide on coming through turn number 13, that's going to lose him yet more time. Gap is going to be up to around about 0.8, 0.9 seconds now. But the thing is, Job still has time left. Sebastian Job just needs to be careful though that he doesn't put too much heat through those rear tyres because it will compromise him if he uh, if he does uh, do that a little bit too much and he gets to put too much heat through them it can affect him now there is lap traffic ahead of them that is the uh, course in racing silver car they're uh, about four seconds or five seconds behind that car they are gaining on it whether that car will come into effect and come into play in these closing moments of the race is going to be here to see 15 minutes remaining in this race as they come across the line once again for another lap and as we expect that lap time was compromised by that little mistake down into the hairpin that gap 
nine tenths of a second between Patrick Pichler and Sebastian Job. Both determined to get their first win of the season. Job running wide over the dirt there on the edge of the turn one. He's trying to carry as much speed as he can as possible. And uh, well, Zenith Motorsport, Zenith High Speed as well. They're involved in a battle for 11th and 12th place as well. As I was saying, we've not really been mentioning them throughout this series, but they're uh, putting in a good show here today. Plus 12 positions on the day. Jim Racing GTR Centre Azuri in front of them in the BMW. They're up 18 positions in this race. So really good gain of positions from both teams. Strategy and driving will have come into it. And uh, they're certainly doing a good job here. And Connery, these two, uh, they're two completely different cars here. You've got the BMW that hasn't got the top speed of the Audi but it has got the cornering capabilities that Audi maybe just doesn't quite have. And that BMW also so good on its brakes as well. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. And uh, the places where the BMW is also very strong is coming through the uh, you know, slow speed, more mechanical grip dependent sections as we will as we will get a replay of the ERT, the Evolution Racing Team car game past Team Gym. Yep, that's... Um further down your order as well but ERT making moves not again not the best of days for Evolution Racing Team maybe that uh, change of car to the Audi not suiting them compared to last season maybe the changes in the balance of performance as well uh, not suiting them in this series as we head on through towards the latter stages of this race that battle for the lead still three quarters of a second between the two of them and uh, looking at 17th and 18th that's Jim uh, they are in the Jim GTR Centre white car and Evolution Racing Team 28 so that's uh, Martin Solari and Simon Fiegel heading in towards I uh, believe that's Cunningham yes it is and then through Collier and these two, these are battling away. You've got a three-car battle here. Well, four-car battle, potentially, because uh, Bad Alt Sim Racing, Neto Nascimento coming into this one as well, getting involved in this battle. And Bo Albert is not that far behind as well in this battle. So good battle in three field. This is all for 17th, 18th, 19th, and 20th in your race here. And Connery, the other. It, it may be for the quote-unquote latter positions, but it still counts, and it still counts towards the championship. Yeah, every point is crucial in this championship. You can talk about that first, uh, was it the first season of uh, this particular you know, GT World Championship? Only one point separated uh, the winners at the end of that event for VRS Commander Civil Sports. So, you know, single points do matter, and uh, when it comes to that final race, you don't want to be looking at being one extra position to have having to finish the top of the top of the pile. As we go across the line again with this battle, and uh, Jim having to go a little bit defensive. Evolution Racing Team looking to the inside. Simon Fagel down the inside of turn number one makes that move stick jump Jim's run a bit wide and here comes bad out sim racing now and that's a that's a mentor through as well compromises Jim's entry through turn number three and four so that's a loss of two positions there for Jim racing GTR center white uh, for them as uh, well leaders are getting close again and uh, I'll bring will into this one because uh, those last lap times they're getting closer once again. And again, look at that. Sebastian Job was, well, what, three-tenths of a second faster on that last lap? He was, as we've been... I would, would say one thing, is that the mid-pack battles have been fantastic again here today. But out front, we've still got a battle between Sebastian Job and also Pure Racing Team and Patrick Peachler. And, well, with Peachler, he's got to do what he's done many times before and hold off one of the biggest names in sim racing and i'm sure if sparrow is here he will be talking about spray points as downtown inside once more time goes sebastian joe but not this time the issue for sebastian joe blow is can he hold his nerve paul because we saw in the pro series of road racing he could not do that He's a young driver still, let's not forget that as well. He's still developing, he's still learning, and I tell you what...
and that could come into play here but Connery this battle for the lead they're not going to let it lie it's going to go right to the very end this one yeah and then maybe another factor starting to come into play as well because there are a bit more bits of lap traffic ahead uh, that's Corset Racing Silvo, currently running about a second, half a second slower than these guys. Uh, so he'll be brought back into things uh, before the end of this race, just in just a couple of laps time. So does he decide to uh, disrupt these leaders a little bit, make it, uh, make their lives a little bit difficult? Especially when you consider Corset Racing Black, P number four, also scoring good points as well. That could be huge. As we're heading towards the closing stages, under nine minutes remaining of this race. And uh, these two, they're giving us one heck of a show. We're also getting one heck of a show further down as well. Jim and Zenith still battling away between the two of them. Pure racing team, by the way. Patrick Pichler flashing the lights. He wants by this lap traffic because they'll now start him to be effect. Here comes Job down the inside into the hairpin. No, Pichler's got that for the time being. Job is desperate now. He's wanting that position to do, go. And uh, I tell you what, these guys, they're putting, on, they're putting on a display of supreme driving talent. That's for sure. That's why you come along to the virtual race. It's called GT World Championship Series. You want to so see what, the Neo. best drivers. And, well, starting very shortly will be the Neo Endurance Series finale, the 24 Hours of Le Mans. Make sure you check that one out. That's going to be a fantastic race uh, there. So you can uh, check that out on the stream. But I'll tell you what, you don't want to miss the finish of this race as we're heading into 7 minutes, 45 seconds of this one. And this one... It's Look going at your to leaders. the wire. Look at your leaders then. It is Patrick Pichler in the lead. He's behind that court sim racing silver car. And that core car moving out to the right. Now, is he letting the drivers through? Is he letting the leaders through? That's the question. And yes, he is. He's going to let them through. He doesn't have to, as we said earlier. Sebastian Job trying to use the slipstream of that uh, core car. Not able to get up with them. But uh, Connery, that was clever from Job to try, and use the, try to use the slipstream as much as possible of that lap traffic. Yeah, absolutely. And they were so close, heading themselves through a sunset bend. Uh, there's a still more lap traffic ahead of them. That's NWS Esports that could be a factor uh, by the end of this race, depending on how things go. So it, it could not be over in terms of cars getting in the way for both of your race leaders. But look at that Sebastian Job closing so much in towards the break. It's over turn number three into this slow sort of S section just before Big Ben now. And this is one of the major overtaking opportunities he's now down into the hairpin but I don't think job is close enough yeah you would imagine he's just not quite there to make the move it's like under the bridge onto the brakes once again time is running out now and you would imagine that job will have wanted to have made this move by now and uh, through in towards Cunningham once again Through the right hander, through the left of Collier once again. But that lap traffic ahead, next lap traffic for them is that NWS Esports car, Alejandro Sanchez, giving them the uh, giving them a bit of a draft here as they go through Bishop once again. Not quite close enough to make the move, Joe, but uh, he's certainly piling the pressure on. as uh, looking at uh, your leaders still and uh, it's, it's all going on here Will and uh, really this is going to be one for the ages it will be and we've never seen a finish as close as this in the VRS GT R Racing World Championship Series it is two turns per second as they come across the line and Sebastian Job is looking and hunting. The question is here, Paul, when is he going to try and make the move? He's going to try and make the move and try and make it as soon as possible is what the answer is. And, uh, you know, the, the talents that we've been seeing, the, the way that they've been doing has been absolutely fantastic. And Connery, these guys are, uh, are just giving us a supreme display of driving ability here. 
Yep, it is absolutely brilliant stuff and runs down in towards the hairpin. Sebastian Ott is looking again. He's trying to show the nose <laughs> around the outside. Oh, that, the dummy was almost thrown there from Sebastian Job. But the thing is, Pish there, well aware. But down towards turn number 10 of Cunningham now. Sebastian Job has another opportunity now down towards the inside. He's just showing the nose at pretty much every single braking zone. But he gets the twitch off the corner and he loses a bit of momentum. That is quite unfortunate for him as they got a little bit of that traffic again to be able to deal with. This is Glacier North now that could factor into this. But FA Racing G2 looking incredibly, incredibly uh, desperate now because all of their attempts have just fallen in vain so far. Down towards Le Mans now, or at least the Le Mans complex, the S's, before the actual Le Mans corner. And they're just brake checking each other, tapping on the brakes, tapping on the brakes, trying to catch each other out. And now on the run down towards uh, Sunset Bend, Sebastian Job just tucked within that slipstream. Will have to dive out and then get the, that, tar, that car passed. But here comes the rest of the race lead, perhaps. Sebastian Job has to go around the outside, almost contact there uh, to Patrick Pischler, but they will both survive coming through Sunset Bend on the exit now still no run for Sebastian Job but the laps are just taking away the time is just taking away three minutes remaining in this one perhaps only two more laps left in this event as my voice will try to hang on as far as this one goes FA Racing G2 still on the aggressive still trying to go very deep on the brakes in towards turn number three but he doesn't uh, be able to bring it alongside just yet coming out of turn number five now through turn number six of Big Bend I don't think he's close enough now to be able to make a move but uh, he's just got to sell up for the run perhaps maybe coming down in towards turn number 10 of Cunningham maybe in through Le Mans maybe through Sunset Bend and then I'm do back. that all again now for the last lap as well as well this is coming down to the wire this really is and this is going to be one of the most exciting finishes in the history of the VRS GT Racing Endurance Championship as they come into Cunningham Corner once again and now they do the run down towards Le Mans as what we see for these drivers is absolute perfection. Sebastian Job, of course, and that um, FA Racing GT2 Logitech car, they started on pole position, but Paul, the issue is they are not there. For a minute and 45 seconds left to go, there's gonna be one lap to go at the line, and I think that Pure Racing team now has to play ultimate defense, because this could be amazing. You've got to see Pure Racing Team park the car on the apex as do as much tactics as possible to slow down that FA G2 Logitech car to be able to keep that race win. We're coming in towards the final lap of this race. It's going to be brilliant stuff here. It's Patrick Pichler of Pure Racing Team Red. He's just been in for the one session, uh, one uh, stint here versus Sebastian Job again. Just in for one stint here after their teammates did the two stints in towards turn number one. Job looking, jinking out, trying to make that move. It's not going to work this time for the time being, but uh, here we go towards two, through two into three. Break hard, get your line right. Job taking that wider entry into three, trying to get his lines right through four, into five, carrying speed out of five, through big bend at turn six. This is going to be the place where he tries to make the move. He's going to try and make it in towards the hairpin, perhaps. He's just not quite close enough. He's jinking out, but he's not close enough to make that move under the brakes. Patrick Pichler holds on to that position for the time being as he go through the hairpin, out that corner, through five heading towards Cunningham once again. Pichel doing a fantastic job so far, holding on to that lead for the time being. He's been under intense pressure for the last half an hour of this race. Through the go, Collier, tricky, long, sweeping left-hander through the right into tower. Hard braking through tower. Don't get your line wrong. Carry the speed now through Bishop. The time is running out. The corners are running out for Sebastian Job here. Can he make a move? We're on the last lap. Through the right. The left. Get your line right. Through this right-hander. 
get your exit right and that's what Pichel has done there he's got the better exit out that Le Mans corner heading down the Ullman straight for the final time in this race here Sebastian Job trying to use the slipstream heading towards Sunset Bend he's going to try and make the move is he under the braking jinx out to the left not able to make the move it's down to the inside though still in Sunset Bend final corner Pichler can he just hold on as he's going across the line and the answer is going to be a win for Pure Racing Team Red Patrick Pichler in the Virtual Racing School GT World Championship what a finish to this magnificent race brilliant stuff from both Pichler and Job there at the end Connery that was sensational stuff Job just couldn't quite get the job done today yeah, he just couldn't quite get it done. And Patrick Pischler just take a bow. One of the most impressive defensive uh, drives that I have pretty much ever seen in Bring the top in. level of sim racing. Absolutely brilliant effort. Well, we've still got battles going on, Will, but that, that, was, that was epic stuff from the front two there. I'll tell you one thing. I remember a race from Martin Cronke back in 2014, and it set himself up to win the World Championship. That was exactly the same, what I saw. Well, Patrick Pitcher holding off one of the best races in the world. And we saw Patrick Pitcher, I think, here today, cementing pure racing teams, not only their attempt at a world championship, but their world championship status. And we've had so many battles going on today on the final lap, but Pitcher and pure racing team red win. And that's the most important part of it. The battle is still going on further down. TTL Esports coming through 16th place, 15th place, sorry. Uh, that will be a massive disappointment for them. Bardell Sim Racing and Evolution Racing Team were pretty close together. Not able to make the move stick at the end as uh, the rest of your field is coming through. But we uh, have got to take a breath there. That was uh, absolutely epic stuff. Uh, oh, Inex Racing Yellow and Jim battling away for the last of the few positions as they're going to come across the line here results up and uh, well let's get your results then on screen and it is pure racing team red who win this one by two tenths of a second ahead of the fa racing g2 logitech g car third place vrs quanda sim sport number eight with court sim racing black in fourth place lots of hot core mode spots started fifth finished fifth in this one with simicube inex racing blue in sixth place esther racing team seventh place for them today in this event with a neville sim racing white in eighth pure racing team yellow started 22nd and have finished ninth that's an excellent job from them today in the tenth place for Devil sim racing blue jim Racing GTR Center, Azuri, 29th to 11th. And uh, Thrustmaster Vivada, yellow, uh, red, sorry, in 12th place. VRS Quanda Sim Spot, number one in 13th with VRS Trans Tasman Racing in 14th place. TTL Esports, 15th with Bardal Sim Racing in 16th. Evolution Racing Team, 17th. Two of the gyms, the white and the pink car, 18th and 19th with MSP Phoenix Racing, two in 20th place. The rest of your field on the screen and uh well well i mean i'll hand it to you that was absolutely brilliant racing loved every minute of that race and uh, what a cracking finish it was there Absolutely, <laughs> it really it's it's a tough act to uh, to live up to, is that? But uh, those drivers today, they uh, they they gave it their all and uh, thoroughly deserved the the efforts of those drivers. That was excellent to uh, watch and uh, a brilliant way to uh, to finish off this race. And uh, I'm just thankful for being in the commentary on that one. We will step aside for a brief moment here on Racebot TV and on iRacing Live. We'll be back with post-race coverage after these messages. Of course, you're watching Racebot TV and iRacing Live. And we'll be back next.
Round number two of the VRS GT I Racing World Championship is in the books. And well, this time at the top of the scoring pylon, it will be the team of Pure Racing Team Red. Patrick Pitchler claiming victory here today. And one thing I want to talk about here is that last time out was TTL Esports and Joshua Rogers. They did not do that well here today. Yeah, they, they will be very disappointed with their result here today. 15th for TTL, and uh, that's certainly going to affect them with their uh, championship uh, challenge, that you would have to say. But I tell you what, Patrick Pichler, hats off to him. To withstand all that pressure for half an hour was just absolutely incredible. As I said, it's one of the best performances I've seen since Martin Kronke versus Gregor Hutu in Proto GT. It was a Fantastic performance there by Patrick Pichu. He was able to hang on at the end of that motor race and he was able to get himself race victory by two turns of a second over Sebastian Job. Yeah, incredible drive. Absolutely stunning. But hats off to uh, Sebastian Job as well to be able to catch up that gap that they were behind at the pit stops and to put that pressure on. It's not easy to do. He could have easily made a mistake that took them both out. But, you know, hats off to him for the uh, the great driving and great spatial awareness as well. We've got Max Beneke here on RaceWatch TV. Paul, talk to him. Yeah, Max Beneke, race win for yourselves in the Pure Racing Team Red Car. Uh, just talk to us about uh, that first, uh, the first two stints for yourself. You were behind for almost the first half an hour. Then you made a, quite an audacious move and uh, you made it stick and were able to pull away. Yeah, first of all, hello, good evening, everybody. Um, yeah, it was a great race day for us. Uh, my first stint, um, I, I pushed a lot. Um, I tried to overtake Frederick uh, in the first three or four laps, but there was just no way. So I decided to, um, yeah, save a lot of fuel to make it a lap more in, in the first stint. And after half an hour, I just felt that I could drive a bit faster than he, he was. So I was going for a move that might not be <laughs> the one you expect. But at the end on Sebring, it's the only way you can yeah, shock uh, another driver and get past him. And finally it, it worked out. Um, and then the first 10 laps were quite uh, difficult because there was such a different grip behind, uh, not being behind uh, Frederick anymore. So I had to adapt myself again. And then um, I think in the last five, six, seven laps, I was able to pull away a bit. So I think I, I proved myself wrong that I was, uh, yeah, that I was able to drive a bit faster. And yeah, that was the first stint. Second stint, then no tire change. It, it worked um, out. It was really um, difficult to drive. First I, yeah, I think that my tires... It's Matic and Ray Turner will be doing uh, coming. ...earlier than uh, the tires of Frederick. So he again closed the gap a bit to two seconds. And then the last stint was just so incredibly... Uh, intense. I was sitting here um, watching for like 20 minutes because the rest of the 20 minutes I was not able to watch because I had such a big heart rate. 
Um, and then the final three laps were so intense. I was sitting here hoping that everything is going yeah, good for us. And in the end, Patrick just did just an amazing job. Um, yeah, ni nice wording there uh, to um, yeah stay in front. Uh, yeah, so in the end, amazing result and pity for all our other teams or two other teams who had um, yeah incidents, um, especially the disconnect of, of uh, Max, Maximum Venek. Um, so it could have been another PRT car on the podium, but yeah, some things happen. So I'm just glad to be here and of course uh, congrats to um, G2 and of course to Koanda for finishing on the podium uh, with an intense battle. Well, I, I was just going to mention about uh, the, the incredible uh, drive that Patrick put in there at the end. How much was the team communicating with him, or was it a case of, no, he, he's in this intense battle, just leave him to it, let him focus? There was, like, no communication at all. After, after two laps, he unmuted himself and said, how shall I defend, hard or soft? And I said, well, it's up to you, but uh, don't risk everything. And from that moment on, after two or three laps into the stint, he just muted himself for the whole hour and we didn't talk to him at all. We didn't write to him. So um, he was completely on his own and he, yeah, as I said, did an amazing job. That, uh, yeah, uh, that is incredible. Incredible finish to, uh, to this race. Before we let you go, uh, anyone that you want to say thank you to, any uh, sponsors that you want to get mentioned in? Yeah, first of all, thanks to the whole team uh, for building a, a nice setup, for practicing a lot for this race. Um, and yeah, uh, thanks to our sponsors, Asha Racing, um, Spuzu and Autos Valmaya. Well, there you go then. Your race winners, Pure Racing Team Red, Maximilian Beneke and Patrick Pagele. Hand it back to you, Will. Yeah, indeed. So, and we're going to talk to Sebastian, not Sebastian Joe, because he is not here. So we're going to talk to Mitchell de Jong. He came home third place here today. And well, Mitchell, you got yourself third place for Commander Sim Sports and that number eight machine. But it's not a victory, but it's still a good point in terms of the championship. Definitely. Uh, certainly, I think, a pretty uh, strong race for us, uh, considering where we started. Uh, a lot of fun, uh, very intense, and... Um yeah, we, we had a bit of a different strategy compared to the rest of the field, so uh, had some really nice opportunities to try to overtake and uh, just have some fun. Uh, it, it turned out to be really fun, so. In hindsight, was your idea of going short stint early and long stint later on a good idea, or do you think that hurt you at the end of the motor race? Uh, well, we actually did the opposite of that. Uh, we tried to save our shorter one for the end and um you know what i mean yeah we uh <laughs> i think i think it was okay um you know not so much you can do we we kind of sw swapped around the tires compared to the rest of the field so uh you know we just uh try to do our own thing and see where we ended up so we are two hours into the championship you guys are doing well so far but what would it take now for kawana to win the championship uh, I think for us, we need to take it one race at a time. Obviously, we really missed the mark with setup in Bathurst, and uh, we, our whole team struggled as a whole because of that. Uh, we got a bit closer this time, um, certainly in the race set, so uh, we need to just take kind of what we learned here and uh, continue to apply it and uh, keep learning and get it closer and closer. I think uh, driving-wise, uh, prep between everyone is really, really good. Uh, obviously, with us having the Sebring 12 hour allowed us to kind of get a good comparison compared to everyone, try to fix what we had issues with in Bathurst and, uh, you know, kind of keep moving forward. And uh, hopefully we can, yeah, keep going in that direction for the final uh, next few rounds. Well, before we let you go there, Mitchell, of course, if you ask one since what, who you want to give a shout out to? Uh, for one, uh, all of our teammates, of course, uh, are one that uh, did a great job with prep for this. Um, and uh, Mac for doing a lot of prep, especially doing races during the week and um, uh, giving us a good comparison. Uh, I'd like to thank all our partners, uh, Virtual Racing School, uh, Hoisingveld, Simquip, uh, Anwar Design, uh, Fitech, um, Go Real Timing, and uh, of course you guys, Race Spot, for uh, broadcasting it for us. Um, well, Matt Backham is here as well. Let's talk to you very quickly. Matt Backham, um, how's the race been? Uh been okay, I mean, just 
start was uh, really hectic. I, I have no idea what happened there. Uh, but that's just my own fault for uh, messing qualifying up so badly, I guess. I should have been a little bit further up front, and then things would have been easier. Um, yeah, the first stint, I was just trying to overtake as many cars as I could, trying to get to the front, because I think our pace was pretty good. Um, I'm not 100% confident that we could have been fighting for the win, but I, I definitely think we could be very close. Um, so yeah, I think in the end, P3, is, I'll take it. <laughs> Happy for that there, Matt Backham and, well, Paul. I'd say that Commander Sim Sports, they are a team that still, well, could be a part of the championship picture. They certainly could be. Uh, I mean, to get a result like that, they were seventh in the championship, starting 14th to come third. You know, that isn't done by accident, is yeah. that? So, uh, you know, really good to see them get that good result and uh, keeps them certainly in the hunt for the championship here. That is all we've got time for here today. We have got, of course, in the year 24 hours taking place now here on Racebot TV and on iRacing Live. So catch that one. That is it for round number two of the VRS GT Racing World Championship from Sebring International Raceway. We will talk to you next time.